next game are going to be far greater than anything we faced to this point. I love playing away. It just gives me juice knowing that this is their territory and we're coming to take over. For three hours, the nation is going to respect the front of that jersey. What the hell would you be willing to do for three hours? We're really excited to play Alabama. They can beat you before you ever run out on the field. But we're going to be very excited to, to get in our stadium and play them on a national CBS game. I got all the respect in the world for Alabama, but they're not unbeatable. And that brings us to a red out at Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas. On a picture perfect sun drenched day in Northwest Arkansas, the Home Depot SEC on CBS brings us a top 20 matchup for the 33rd time. The Razorbacks and the Crimson Tide, the Tide ranked number two, the hometown Razorbacks, the number 20 team in the country. It's a perfect day for football here in early October. And we welcome you, everybody. I'm Brad Nussler. My partners are Gary Danielson and Jenny Dell. This is when it gets fun, partner. The battle for the West starts right now. And we know Bama's going to be there, but isn't it great to have a prideful team like Arkansas back in here competing with these teams in the SEC West? Last year, we had a barn burner, 42-35. I said to you the other day, you remember the numbers the quarterbacks put up? Oh, I remember. I tell you, we went off the air with something like this, this graphic that we showed these two guys lit it up. I mean, this was probably the start of the Bryce Young run for the Heisman. And last year, K.J. Jefferson showed Bama that he's not just a runner. He can throw the ball, too. Over 900 yards of offense between those two young men and eight touchdowns. But they do it in different ways, Gary. They do. Bryce can run. But when you throw as well as he does and the weapons he has, he can put 500 on you. I think for K.J. Jefferson to lead his Arkansas team to win today, we're going to need more running from him against this team. Alabama's off to a 4-0 start as the Hawks take the field. They played tremendous defense against a schedule that really hasn't been that tough so far. But nonetheless, their defense is playing lights out, and they might have the defensive player of the year in the country. Well, he might have been that last year. Yeah. <laughs> Will Anderson, a lot of people said he might have been the best defensive player a year ago. He's back to terrorize teams. He was a terror in this game last year. Everybody who plays against Alabama must point and account for number 31. Oddly enough, his old roommate is now on the other side. Drew Sanders, part of a two-linebacker combo right now for the Razorbacks. It's the new world of college football, isn't it? And yes, Drew Sanders has made this Arkansas defense better. Two linebackers, Drew Sanders 42. He comes off the edge, he comes from the middle. He is a blitz menace. But bumper pool is Arkansas football. He plays all out. And he loves the university, and he loves to play football here. Kind of like their coach, Sam Pittman. With more on the coaches, we go to the third member of our team, Jenny Dell. Jenny. Yeah, well, Nick Saban has been anointed the best coach in college football. But around these parts, Sam Pittman reigns supreme. When he took over this football program three years ago, he has completely restored football prominence for Arkansas. And when it comes to today's matchup, Pittman, he told me he truly believes this team can compete. If you mix a little of last year when the Hogs played Bama tough to the close one last week, Pittman thinks that there are no miracles needed to come out of this one victorious guys he called Saban the greatest coach of all time but let me tell you such mutual respect with these two there's no doubt about that there was a time when Nick tried to hire Sam it didn't work out and now they sit right next to each other in the SEC meetings today they meet in front of a packed house of 76,000 all wearing red except the Alabama folks that got tickets they're wearing their road whites 15 straight wins for Alabama over Arkansas, leading the all-time series 25 to 7. Their last win was a two-overtime victory over the Tide way back in 2006. I remember that one. My second game here at CBS. You talk about a perfect day. It is. Absolutely. This is Chamber of Commerce stuff in <laughs> Northwest Arkansas. Sunny 77. 
light winds. Arkansas on the toss. They will defer. So the Crimson Tide and Bryce Young will have it on offense first. Yes, uh, I was here Wednesday for practice, and I think Jenny hit the vibe of the Arkansas football team. The close loss to AM, a game they thought they should have won, yeah. and how they played on the road last year. They believe. That's half the battle. They believe. This city has been lit up all week in anticipation of this game. Bates has got it teed up. Jameer Gibbs is back at the goal line for Alabama. Can somebody challenge Alabama in the SEC West? These guys think they can. We'll find out in about three and a half hours. Here we go. Gibbs will let it go. Alabama will start at the 25-yard line. And with that, the guy we just talked about will take the field a quarterback. And he is something special. You know, you win awards when you're really good. Well, the Heisman is the highest. National Player of the Year is pretty good. Sosa Maxwell, first team All-American. Davey O'Brien Award, you keep going and keep going and keep going. That's number nine. And the one award that he's focused on this year, the National, National Championship. Championship. Yep. The ring is a thing. Alabama thinks they've got the makings of a team that good. We start to find out today. Jameer Gibbs on a cutback. Got a couple and that's all. Second down and seven. Lot to the tight end in motion. Bryce Young, his first throw is going to be deep. On the out, got it, perfect pass all the way down to the 32-yard line to Kobe Prentice. That quiets the crowd. So last year, Alabama hit this Arkansas defense with the wide out going to the middle of the field. This time, the slot, middle of the field, and then takes it to the flag. A perfect throw. Nice design route by Bama. Well spotted at the 31, the Razorbacks. Back to Jameer Gibbs. Broke a tackle somehow and got away with a stiff arm. Got five or six out of nothing. I thought he was going to go down behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think Drew Sanders had him. I, you know, I never thought he had him wrapped up and down, but Gibbs spun out of it. Well, that takes it inside the 25 immediately. Second down and three. JoJo Earl in the lineup down to the bottom of your screen. A wide out that's had some injury issues. Young throws complete. Nice pitch and catch for Treshawn Holden. So we take a look. Papa John's lineups. Here's the group that joins Bryce Young, including Gibbs, who is a multi dimensional player. Receiver, runner, kick returner. He does it all. And a change at center in the McLaughlin, number 56, is in for Dalcourt. Dalcourt's had some injury problems, too, playing Nick. Not in there right now. First down at the 19. Quick throw to the middle. Tipped, intercepted. Picked off at the one yard line by McLaughlin. You can't throw it any better. But when you stick out one hand, it bounces up, and McLaughlin gets the turnover. Watch it. He's beat. He's beat. Did he get a little tug there? Is that why he slowed down? Did McLaughlin get his hand on the jersey to slow him down? Because it seemed a little off balance. No, it was a hit downfield. Yeah, a bump downfield just to break his stride enough, or that ball would have been completed. 
That is a third interception of the year already for Dwight McLaughlin. I, I wonder is, did the bump come after the ball was in the air, though? That's the question. Could not tell from that look. Big play by the Arkansas defense to stop an Alabama drive. Nope, it was just before the ball was released. You know, the good news is they've got the ball. The bad news is where they're going to spot it for the offense for the Razorbacks. A.J. Jefferson will come up under center because they're at the one-yard line. He'll try to get it and does out to the five. That gives him some room to work. Yep, kind of almost ran right through the safety on that play, trying to get inside and almost rub the man-to-man -man coverage and ended up costing him a half a stride and the interception. Rocket Sanders, first down and more. Out to the 16. Can this Arkansas team, so good at running the ball, find some room to run the ball, make them two-dimensional? That's the goal against this Bama defense today. In the shotgun, K.J. Jefferson at the 16-yard line. Going to be a wide receiver screen. Got it out quickly to Keytron Jackson. Take a look at the Papa John starting lineup. We're going fast paced here. We've got to get it in while we can. KJ Jefferson, <laughs> over 900 passing, over 250 rushing. And he's already got a nice throw out to Keytron Jackson to get it to the 24 yard line where it's second down and two. The on balance line, which Arkansas is in now hurt Alabama last year. Right now, Kendall Bryles is saying, did you adjust, Alabama? First down by Sanders. Goes for about seven. Here's the offense around K.J. Jefferson. Everybody talked about Matt Landers. Both the coaches, the coordinators, the quarterback said he's got to be a guy that has a big day. He's their fastest receiver. Keep it on the ground with Sanders, driving with his offensive line for close to three. Bama defensively. We talked about Will Anderson, and he's got help from Henry To'o To'o, who had 13 tackles in this game last year. And a couple touchdown saving tackles, I remember, last year when Alabama was kind of out of whack with the on-balance. To'o To'o made the touchdown saving tackles. He had a couple sacks as well, number 10 in the middle for the Alabama defense. Second down and seven. Opening offensive drive for the Razorbacks. That might be a lateral and there's a flag down. And so is Hazelwood. Yeah, it, it, it looked to me like an illegal formation. Did they have too many men in the backfield? They had a bunch to that side of the field. Yes. And Scott Walker is our referee. Illegal formation. Offense. More than four players in the offensive backfield. Five yard penalty. Second down. You got the call, Garrett. Yeah, every, you know, there's guys moving, shifting, then going in motion, and they end up with five guys in the backfield. These two guys, one of them should be on the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Trey Knox was a motion guy and probably should have set up a little bit closer to the line. At any rate, that backs him up to second down. Yeah, and, and it makes number 31, Will Anderson, somebody you got to find. When he gets these long yardage situations, Arkansas has to know where 31 is. He's standing up right there at the 30-yard line on the top of your screen. Here he comes. Jefferson broke out of the pressure, throws on the run, had to just loft it, incomplete intended for Matt Landers. It'll be third down at 12. Make your pardon, it's fourth down. That'll bring out Max Fletcher to punt. McKinstry will drop back and he has been dangerous. Yeah. He's not even normally their punt returner, but he's been doing it so far. And he's got 244 yards to lead the country in that capacity. So the whole sideline, offense, defense, everybody says as soon as Kool-Aid gets his hands on the ball, we start paying attention. He's not going to get his hands on this one. So bounce out of bounds around the 28-yard line. 
Yep, they're gonna they're gonna walk it up farther, maybe around the 35. 950, first quarter. No score so far. Bryce Young and the offense for Alabama back on the field when we come back. Get nonstop sports news expert picks and the biggest highlights on CBS Sports HQ, the free 24-7 sports news network. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today, and you can join Gary with the HQ gang coming up when we're done here. Bryce Young. First 11 starts, only three interceptions. The last 9-7, and he threw one on the opening series today at the one-yard line on a ricochet off his wide receiver's hands. So that's something he would like to clean up. Only had seven all of last year to go with his 47 touchdown passes. Kendall Randolph's in the game number 85. It's an extra offensive lineman lined up at tight end. Jameer Gibbs speeds off the right side and got almost 10. It was the story of last year's game. He lined up at tight end numerous times, bringing in an extra offensive lineman, and they run right at the power for Alabama. Good job that time at right tackle. J.C. Latham, the highly recruited right tackle, doing a good job over there. You don't have to give number one much of a crease either. No, no. And he hits the hole in a hurry. He is a special football player. Transfer from Georgia Tech. He was the Georgia Tech offense last year. And now a big part of Alabama's spin move on the play action. Young flushed out of the pocket, and he still throws a dart down the sideline. Should have probably been caught by Ja'Cory Brooks, but that thing had some steam on it, and he just couldn't hold it. So one of the things that Alabama loves to do is bring in the extra offensive linemen, and if they sense a team is going to play man-to-man -man on them, well, that is the definition of a drop pass. Well, you're not kidding. Yeah. I mean, that thing was smoking on the way. So they bring in the extra offensive linemen, and they run deeper routes and allow Bryce Young the time to throw the ball deep. Jace McClellan in the backfield now on third down in the yard. Fumble. The drop. And McClellan still got it sure and picked up the first down. How about that? Well, one bounce went the wrong way for Alabama for a turnover. This bounce was good enough for McClellan to take it and get a first down. Keeps his wits about him. If he falls on it, it's right there and they're going to have to punt. He grabs it and, you know, if he'd have grabbed it and fumbled it, everybody said, just fall on it, just right. fall on it. But he does it and gets the first down. Here comes a blitz off the corner. The throw goes that way, and it goes through the hands of Kobe Prentice, who had the long ball earlier. We're going to set the defense for the Hogs. That's what the fans want us to do right now, too. So here it is. Jordan Dominic, number two on their sack list behind Drew Sanders. And all those guys coming in, leading the country in sacks as a group with 20. And they know they have to put pressure on number nine, or they don't have a chance. That's just the way it is when you play Alabama. It's a three-man look, but what do they come with on the blitz? McClellan and Gibbs both in the backfield. It'll be Gibbs straight up the middle. Bulldozes his way across the 50 to the 47. Jameer Gibbs is a pure athlete playing running back. He's as comfortable lining up as a wide receiver in the slot or running the ball. Leads the team in receptions with 17 coming in, doing most of his damage on the ground here early in the first quarter. Third down. Alabama 44% on their third down conversion so far through four games. Oh, tight look from the Arkansas defense. They're challenging the offense. Bryce Young says, are you going to play man against me? Are you good enough? Play clock down to one. Just got it off. Young slant, got his man on the fly. Kobe Prentice, you can say goodbye. Touchdown, Alabama. They were not good enough. Too much space. Bryce Young knew it. I knew it. They were going to play man. He called the audible, and look at the space. That's the man-to-man -man coverage he knows he has. He's going there the whole way. Here comes Arkansas. There goes Alabama. 47 yards for the touchdown. So they didn't score on their opening drive. With When they do, they very seldom lose a game, but they scored on their second drive. 
Three rushes, three passes. The extra point by Reichert is good. They just tipped it off too much. Too easy to read. You've got a veteran quarterback back there. He knew exactly what was coming, and he delivered it. 65 yards in six plays. The capper, a 47-yard touchdown. The 14th touchdown pass of the year for Bryce Young. 7-0, Bama. Tomorrow, it's an NFL on CBS doubleheader. Early games headlined by a battle between the Ravens and the Bills. We'll give you the whole schedule in a minute. There we go. Patriots and the Packers follow. That'll be a good one. Belichick at Lambeau Field, right? It all starts at noon Eastern with the NFL today. Tomorrow, the NFL on CBS. So, in hockey, Chase McClellan would get assist on that play, right? That third down fumble recovery Absolutely. It doesn't happen with that. <laughs> one more look here. Watch what Bryce Young sees. Pretty easy to see. Just here we even watching it on TV. Look at back here. See that right there? You know what he sees? Seven points is what he sees back there. He looks out there, sees all that space. He's got one on one. He's got a safety on a slot receiver. And he's got a 10.800 meter guy. It's, it's forget about it. It, it. it was open. <laughs> Throwing a slant. And the Arkansas guys are going. Oh, we thought with Devontae Smith gone and Jameis right. gone and Mechie gone and Judy gone. <laughs> Here comes another group. Yep. First down Arkansas now trying to answer. Sanders with a stiff arm. And he carried it for about three. Jalen Moody made the stop. It was Jalen Moody, one of my favorite players. I saw him in a spring game two years ago make a bunch of tackles. He has waited. He has waited. He's played behind players. He's finally getting his shot. Patience to play at Alabama. Sanders with some patience until Will Anderson ran it over. It's going to be third down and two. A lot of players at Alabama have had to wait their turn, and Nick Saban sells them, hey, you only need one good year here. Yep. You get drafted to play in the NFL. Big third down for Arkansas just to stay on the field Holy. for their defensive breather. KJ Jefferson didn't get it. It's going to be fourth and one. Yeah, DJ Dale, who was injured a year ago in warmups in this game, didn't go for the fake. Maybe he couldn't go for the fake, but watch this. Fake, fake the pass. DJ says, hey, come right back to me. Fourth to go. Here we go. Are they going to go for it? Alabama almost jumped. He'll look back. Kendall Bryles will look at Sam Pittman and go, are we going to go for it or not? They'll give him one more signal. Five on the play clock. And it might be a timeout or not coming up. Now they'll take the clock down to zero. Flag, and then they'll pop. Fourth out. Like Sam Pittman in that situation goes, I'd rather have a timeout and I'll sacrifice the five yards. Right. right? I thought he'd go for it, didn't you? Well, you know, last year. Watching last week. Last game. year they had a <laughs> fake punt that kind of shocked yes. all of us, but it wasn't on that spot on the field. No. <laughs> he kind of said to us when we met and went with him yesterday, be ready. Be, be ready. Be yeah. ready. I'm going to do everything. <laughs> now, this would be a I good don't play. think he'd take a five yard penalty and then fake a punt, but. It would fake us out, <laughs> it that's would. for sure. You look behind Max Fletcher. And Kool-Aid McKinstry down on the other end. Kool-Aid, this one's a mile in the air. Waits on it. And fair catch at the 20. So, Arkansas at least switches the field position a little bit. But they trail by seven. Now it's time for Do Project Smarter. Presented by the Home Depot. Let's do some smart things or some not so smart things, Gary. <laughs> yes, well, here it is. Pick your poison. If you rush them all out, he can score by the three man rush. Look at this. Look at the time and the patience that Bryce Young does, and the point guard dishes it off. The last second for a touchdown. So a little bit in between three and all <laughs> might be the answer, right? But yeah, not three, though. Well, he's already got a touchdown pass. Last season, there's his numbers on his way to the Heisman Trophy. And threw five touchdown passes in this matchup last season. 
Gibbs. All wrapped up by Eric Gregory. And he's the force that has to push that middle of the defensive line. But according to Barry Odom, defensive coordinator, coming out after making the stop, but no gain on the play, second down and 10. And Tyler Booker, the true freshman guard, is in the game at left guard right now. He's in the rotation. It's a three-man rotation. He's earning playing time. Trips to the left here for Bryce Young. He bobbled the snap momentarily and now fires down the middle complete and completes it. For Trayshawn Holden. Well, Hudson Clark, I think it was number 17. Might have been 19 on the play, but this is the zone defense. Arkansas has got to find players, and they do, but just a second. Actually, it was Bumper Pool. It wasn't a 10. They yeah. got the hit. Trying to play defense, trying to find players, just don't cover grass. But at least let the Alabama receivers know you're going to get hit against our zone defense. You let them know for sure. Third down in the yard, blitz off the corner. Cutback goes that way for the first down run. And it's McClellan out to about the 34. McClellan, nice and patient. Brad's called it a couple times. Running nowadays, it's not down, down, kick out anymore. It's everybody mash forward, find the crease, be ready to cut back, and he did. McClellan leading the team in rushing. It has the second fewest attempts of anybody in the country that has that stat as a leading rusher. So he's making good on the carries he gets, including that last one. Young, play fake all day to throw. Finally, he goes across the middle, incomplete, intended for McClellan. Well, he had plenty of time to scan the field, didn't he? He did, but that's the, when watching practice, Barry Odom was constantly telling his defense, keep your eyes open, find the receivers. Don't just drop back and cover grass. Make the throws tighter. Make Bryce Young be accurate with every throw. Make the receivers understand they're going to get hit after they catch it. And right after he caught it, Kobe Prentice, who's closing in on 100 yards receiving already, dropped immediately. Well, they have the sacks, and that's good. Drew Sanders tied for first, and Dominic, Jordan Dominic helps him. With that many sacks, you'd think their pass defense would be better. That doesn't necessarily correlate. No, they, they're ranked pretty badly, that's for sure. Jameer Gibbs now trots back in to join Bryce Young. Sanders up here from his inside linebacker spot. He becomes the fourth rusher. How will they try to feature him? Stunt him around? What will they do? Third down and seven. They're coming this time. Long ball man is wide open. Isaiah Bond, another one of the young wide receivers, all the way down to the seven. You know, I don't think Nick Saban's very good at poker. Do you know that? Because last night, we were just asking about his receivers. As you watch the protection, good enough. He mentioned Isaiah Bond. He did. He said number 17, I think it's going to be pretty good. <laughs> he just runs by everybody. And Young put it right on him. He couldn't keep his footing. But he does get it down inside the 10 at the 7. Georgia High School, 100 and 200 meter state champ. I wrote it down last night. Young might run with this one. He'll coast with this one. Touchdown, Alabama. Just give it a little fake step to the inside. That froze the would-be tackler out in space. And he cruised in from 8 yards out. I don't know if Nick... Nick Saban is good at poker, but I do know he's good at challenging his football team. He told them our old Alabama teams love to go on the road and be aggressive. Take the fight, show how good they were. He said, if we show how good we were, are, we don't need to be winning these games by one and two points. Reichert in for the point after, up and good. That didn't take long, did it? To cap off an 80-yard drive and seven plays from our AT&T 5G pylon can. This is Bryce Young coming right into your living room. Touchdown, Alabama. 14-0 tie. <laughs> I was wondering what you're going to call those. Thanks. 14 to nothing here early. Alabama on top of Arkansas. 
Bryce Young with the touchdown pass and a touchdown run. Yeah, they, uh, the Heisman Trophy winner just picked out two true freshmen to throw touchdown passes to. do. Kind of like these young guys. He's starting to think. Yeah. And with the college rules, you're going to have them for three seasons. <laughs> You're not going to have Bryce Young to throw to you, though. No, but they'll be there. Fair catch. Hey, well-designed play. You're trying to get your outside receiver matched up on a slot defender, kind of a hybrid right here. You come out, you cross, and then you bring the outside receiver matched up on Miles Slusher. The slot uh, defender got one-on-one. -on -one. He's basically a glorified safety. Both touchdown passes. Well, that was a long play, not a touchdown pass. Both long plays have been on the slot safety, and one play later, they walk it into the end zone. His third rushing touchdown of the year. Big plays with good players. A.J. Green in the backfield with K.J. Jefferson. He wants to throw on first down. Isn't going to get a chance. He'll run it, though, and he's got a big game. Picked up about 14 on the scramble before Mooley, Jalen Moody brought him down. So let's remember about this Arkansas team a year ago in this game. They fell behind 10 to nothing. So it's 14 to nothing now. They're going to have to climb back into this football game one play at a time. They had a bunch of long drives last year. Five for over 75 yards. They'd love a long drive. Green fighting for a yard, maybe. Henry To'o To'o on the tackle. Jenny. Yeah, quick update on running back Jace McClellan. He was hurt in that last series. It looked like he wanted to go back in, but the trainers instead escorted him over to the injury tent. He currently remains in there. I'm told it's an upper body injury, and he should return at some point, guys. Yeah, you saw the collision there with Sanders on McClellan. Got him in the neck area, the upper shoulder. Jenny will keep us posted. We're down to a minute 40, first quarter. K.J. Jefferson trying to get something going here. Broken tackle in the backfield, but it's not going to matter. Will Anderson is the guy that made the play. He yeah. won't get credit for the tackle. He blew it up, didn't he? Yep. He was there right when the handoff was there, right off the edge. When you try to run the edge, they don't block it. They're trying to read it. He makes it happen so fast. And then right behind him, you got number 10 cleaning it up. Last 13 games, 19 sacks, 30 tackles for loss. Number two in the all-time adults of Alabama behind Derek Thomas. And that one incomplete. Had a step out there, Hazelwood, and just not an accurate pass. Yeah, and he, I mean, this game uh, a year ago became his great season he had. K.J. broke the Arkansas percentage record for a season. You know, he's big, he's strong, he runs, but he showed last year he could throw. Missed on that one, though, so it's punting time again for Fletcher. Yeah, and that's dangerous any time Elving it looks like gets the ball. So far, no drives to take the pressure off their defense. Right. Fletcher had a nice high punt last time that kept McKinstry from any kind of return. McKinstry is not going to fair catch this one from the 13. Kool-Aid McKinstry weaving through traffic all the way out to the 42-yard line. That's why his teammates pay attention every time there's a punt. Yeah, pay attention maybe to a flag that may help Arkansas out here a bit. It's down around the 22-yard line where the flag came out. Referee's got his head out. That means that the defender went out of bounds and came back in. Let him sort it out, I have no idea. Clear out of bounds, kicking team number 11. Five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the return. First down. That's what it was. Had his hat off. That meant the defender going down the field ran out of bounds to avoid the block, came back in, gets the five-yard penalty. Not only a good return, but tack five more on. And it's going to be great field position for Alabama. Bottom of your screen, he stepped out on the first. Right, he's just avoiding the block by running on the white <laughs> territory. Can't do that. He ran 15 yards out of bounds. You got to fight your way back in, and he did. He said, wow, it's, it's nice, nice and easy out nice here. It's a clean out here. <laughs> I like this chalk mark thing. This yeah. is really good. 200 yards already for Alabama here in the first quarter. 
Well, they finally walk it off, so it's going to be almost to midfield out to the 49. So Bryce threw for over 500 last year, and he's on a faster pace right now. <laughs> That's not good if you're an Arkansas fan. Remember, the only mistake so far was on a tip pass near the goal line. There's Jace McClellan, so he's out of the tent. And we'll see when he comes back in. Right now, it's Jameer Gibbs. And that's Kobe Prentice in motion. It's Gibbs up the middle. Got into Arkansas territory. So I love the way the package that Gibbs brings to the offense. He reminds me of the Alabama player Kenyon Drake. A little bit of Alvin Kamara yeah. in Tennessee. Two of my favorite players. Got the whole package perfect for modern day football. And this one flanked all the way to the bottom of the field. There's what we're talking about. Multi-purpose guy. Young is looking that way, but he goes instead complete for a first down to Jermaine Burton. And the uh, Georgia transfer has got a first down. So what that does, Bill O'Brien has already schemed this up well, all right? You saw the matchup on the pass deep to set up the touchdown. By sending your running backs and tight ends wide, it declares the defense. If a corner goes out with them, you know you got zone. A linebacker or a safety might have man. You know, Bryce Young knows he's got zone when the second quarter begins. Is that the stoppage? It That's is. it. <laughs> That's the end of one, and it was controlled by second-ranked Alabama. That's for sure. Bryce Young throwing to Prentice. And Bond and cruising in on his own. 14-0 Alabama. It is brought to you by Goodyear as we start the second quarter at Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas. 14 to nothing, Alabama in front and driving again. First snap of the second quarter at the Arkansas 35 yard line. Empty backfield for Bryce Young. Throws incomplete. One of the first misses so far for Bryce Young. Brad Nestler, Gary Daniels, and Jenny Dell. You know, this guy can take the air out of a crowd in a hurry, number nine, and he's done it already in the first Well, 15. you know, sometimes we say stats don't tell the whole true story, but yeah. Bryce Young is really good, great <laughs> stats, and Arkansas's pass defense is ranked 126. We can kind of see why. Yeah. Right? I mean, they're picking up apart too many easy throws. They must, I think their only chance, they've got to pressure Bryce Young. Texas did it. They got him off his spot. How can they get Bryce Young uncomfortable? I mean, how can they do it? It's been the question a lot of teams have faced over the last couple of years. Texas did it a bit, of, you know. They did. They got good that. inside push. Correct. You know, the Auburn game we did at the end of last year, they kind of got the, what, seven sacks in that game. I think you really have to sit, concentrate that if we don't put pressure on this guy, he's too good for this level of play. This is a huge third down. I know it's early in the game, but if they could just hold them to a field goal attempt. Alabama's four. Young steps up, rolls to throw, and they did bring him down as he fumbled out of bounds, and it's Drew Sanders. And that was just what the doctor ordered for the Arkansas defense. So this time, that secondary bought the time to flush the quarterback out, and Sanders ran him down. A year ago, they were teammates. Now you're tackling. Now they got him. They got everybody. That's the coverage you need to allow Sanders to come in and clean up the play. Will Reichard, his career long was against Texas at the beginning of the season, 52 yards. This one will be from 53. Kick on the way, just wide right. So the Arkansas defense did force a field goal, and Reichard missed it. Got the feeling like they had to, doesn't it? They yep. had to have a stop there. They got it. Now it's the offense's turn. They've got to help out that Arkansas team. On CBS. Well, not good on the first three possessions for Arkansas. They got to get something going here offensively. They got the defensive stop they were looking for. And let's see what K.J. Jefferson can do. Threw that one in the ground intended for Matt Landers. So you wonder, you know, Alabama loses 
You know, the receivers, Williams, Mechie, Devontae Smith the year before, the Heisman Trophy winner. But right now, it looks like Arkansas is missing Trayvon Burks. Yep. Last year in this game, he had eight receptions, 179 yards, two touchdowns. He doesn't look like he has a guy he feels comfortable putting the ball up in a 50-50 situation. Doesn't look comfortable right there either. Goes down. DJ Dale with a stop on KJ Jefferson. Staring downfield. See how much time he's got. Well, he can feel Will Anderson. Yep. He? he could feel him. He had to bail out of there. That's one of those things. Will Anderson doesn't get a stat, but he affected the quarterback. That'll show up in the tapes. He's in his track stance right there at the hash mark right now on third down and 10. Alabama's bringing some extra bodies. He throws over Anderson and got it in open space to DeBinion. And Rashad DeBinion, a guy that the coaches are really high on, gets a big first down. Yeah. Kendall Bryle said we will see a little bit of the DeBinion. We asked what he does well, he said everything. Yeah. He's got the whole package. And here he is again. This time on the ground. He left it on the ground, though. I think he was down. No, he wasn't. The umpire says Alabama takes over. We'll take another look at this one. Helms with the recovery. At the time when I called it, I thought he was down. Was fumble recovered by the defense. First Ooh, down, Alabama. I don't think so now. I think it was at Helms that also forced the fumble, and then he dives over and recovers the fumble. Was he down? Was he down? The fans think he's down. Sam Pittman, I think, mouthed the words he's down, but I think uh, he's not. No, no, was his backside down? Was his butt down? I think his rear end was still on the defender. Look. He's sitting on his ball's fumble. Yep, yeah, that's a fumble. That's going Alabama's football. And it is a fumble recovery by Hallams. Nice defensive job by Hallams. They, they have a great screen here to watch the replays. It's almost too good. But they don't have <laughs> slow motion like we do. No, that's right. <laughs> the fans are still up there pointing. And Sam's going to Sam's going to challenge this. I think he's going to lose this one. They already decided. I wonder. I wonder what he will challenge. Does he have something else to point out besides the ball carrier not being down? Gene Steratar is our man in New York watching it with us. Gene. Yeah, I, I can see from the angle that we've got right now. You guys are right on it. And we got a. They are going to review, I guess. Yeah. And, and as Gary said, the jumbotron's great, but Gary, I think maybe the people that are reviewing this play might be a little more biased in the stadium with the replay reviews, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I don't know what Sam would challenge. Wouldn't the official tell him we've already reviewed it? Does does he have to have something else to challenge, Gene, or does he just say, "I want you to take another look"? Can he do that? Yeah, he's, he's probably saying he wants to take another look. When you have a turnover like that, as you said, Gary, they're looking at that play, right, just because they're going to confirm that. Uh, but when a coach calls a timeout and says, look, I want you to look at it, you're going to go through the process. I don't think this will take very long, uh, and then he's going to lose this timeout as well. I think I just read Coach's lips, and I think he said, gall dang it. Gall dang it. You know, in, in basketball, that's where you'd kind of get a tee. Because the crowd you, was, you know, really he was playing to the ball. crowd, right? right. Alabama. You get one of those tees, but you can't get a, you know, a tee <laughs> in football. You know, it's 15 yards. hurts. One point isn't a big deal. So just when the Arkansas offense was showing some life, Hallams takes that life away from him. And Coach Pittman. And there's the gal. Dang it. <clears throat> well, that's one of those veteran safeties that... This Alabama football team is blessed with Marco Helms, Jordan Battle. A lot of people played a lot of plays. Brian Michael Branch. Moore, Brian Branch. They got a lot of experience at that safety and star position. Jace McClellan is back in the lineup, having been in the tent earlier that Jenny told us about. He gets to carry here for a yard or so. That's about it. Stand him up. <laughs> Alabama.
Alabama's defense hasn't had a lot of takeaways entering this week, but they're doing their job today. With that fumble recovery by number two. The other number two, McClellan in the backfield with Bryce Young. Second down and eight. McClellan. Whoa, what a hit there. Was it Sanders? It was. Or was it Jalen Johnson? They were both in the vicinity. Johnson comes in from his safety position, turns it back in, cleaned up that time by Gregory. Number eight, number 50, and then right at the end, number 42. 42. That's good team defense. Set that edge with your safety. They stopped the third and six to force the field goal on the last series. Can they stop a third and eight with Alabama on their end of the field? Young rips it down the middle, in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. Treshawn Holden, and he is holding his stomach. You could tell when he caught the ball, he could almost feel the hit. Remember, part of the game plan for Arkansas is to let the receivers know that there's going to be someone there when they catch the ball. Drop, hit, right at the same time. And boy, he took a tough one right there, didn't he? Like right in the rib cage. Gary Johnson let him have it as soon as the ball was in the vicinity. And Bryce Young is yes, going in the tent. Wonder if he hit his finger on the th helmet as he threw the ball. Holden is up. Did not see it. Had my eyes downfield. Didn't see it. But you could see he was very upset. Threw his helmet down as he yeah. headed into the tent. We'll get another look at remember, the end of the play. Remember Dak Prescott hit his thumb and broke his thumb on it. I didn't see anybody near him. Neither did I. Did he feel his shoulder? It's almost as if his shoulder popped out or something. He's holding it like he's got a dead shoulder, doesn't he? He's definitely favoring it. Burnett punts, fair catch, called for and taken just inside the 10 yard line by Bryce Stevens. So now Arkansas is going to take over, and the big question mark is about the Heisman Trophy winner. Here he is behind him as he lets go. He doesn't touch anything. No, he doesn't. But the grimace on his face tells the story and hanging that right arm. You can see the and worry on his shoulder. Saban. Yep, right at his shoulder. CB. Well, in the tent on Alabama's side is the Heisman Trophy winner. Let's take you back. Brad, the prior series on the scramble on third down when Drew Sanders hits him, he throws the ball at the last second. As he extends his arm, he lands on it. Watch him grab his shoulder. And then the right at the end, end he'll right grab right his there. shoulder. Ness, I pulled my, I tore my rotator cuff on a play exactly like that, extending my arm and landed on a stick, extended arm. You don't know it's hurt until you throw the next throw. Let's pray that's not the play case. Right. And remember, they ran the ball with McClellan yes. twice. That was his first toss since that play. So obviously, we'll keep an eye on that. KJ Jefferson losing yardage here. Back to the five. Jenny? Yeah, when Bryce came over to the sideline, it looked like he was trying to run to the locker room, and the trainers actually stopped him and brought him inside the injury tent. I heard a very, very extreme yell coming from him as he was throwing down his helmet. So, guys, I'll keep you posted on whatever I hear. And, and, oh and believe me, when you hurt that rotator cuff or separate your shoulder, you know right away on your next throw. And that was the next throw. Dominic Johnson in... The backfield right now with KJ Jefferson. They're backed up to the five yard line. Here's Johnson. Spins his way for about six. Still going to be third down and long. You know, part of the story last year was the quarterbacks we talked to, but also the story was each team had long drives. Last year at Alabama, Arkansas had five touchdown drives of over 75 yards, one over 90. They need a long drive. They need to convert a third and eight to do it. Johnson trots out as an extra receiver to the bottom of your screen. Blitz is coming on Jefferson. Down the middle, in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Kadron Wilson. And Jadron 
You got to help the quarterback. You got to help the team out if you're a receiver. There's been a couple of those. Yeah, kids. you got to make this play. It's right there, just a little bit inside. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. It bails out your teammates. It gets you a first down. He and might have. He might have felt Demarco Hellams coming, but yeah, still. Yeah, well, it goes with SEC football. You yeah. got to catch that one. Max Fletcher now is going to have to punt from his own end zone, and number one, Kool-Aid McKinstry back. Waiting on this one around the 40 yard line of Alabama. But you hit it a mile in the air again. McKinstry camps under it from the 38. To the far side of the field. To midfield. McKinstry. Inside the 30. He's still running all the way down inside the 20. He is electric on punt returns. Oh, God. His lead in the country is not going to be diminished by what he's already shown here in the first half. He knew, knew he was going left the whole way. The yep. setup was left side, used his athletic ability and a lot of good blocks to get down there. 45 yards later, they finally shove him out of bounds at the 17. And in at quarterback is Malik Hornsby. No, no. Uh, Jalen Milrow, excuse me. We saw him. A little bit earlier in the season. Some mop up duty, basically. And Jameer Gibbs down to the 10. So we talked to Coach Saban about the backup quarterback if something bad happened. And he said Jalen runs the whole offense, but a little more, a little more of the Jalen Hurts stuff right. he brings to the package. Well, that's a good package. Here, something like Jalen Hurts. Yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't gone away, has he? No. Second down and three. Gibbs has it first and goal around the three. This might be the story of the first third of the college football season in a nutshell. The Heisman Trophy winner with an injured shoulder. And Milrow will take it in. Touchdown, Alabama. When we talked about why the offense doesn't run as well as it did before, he said, well, you become unbalanced when you have a passing quarterback. All of a sudden, you put another guy in who can also run, and Bama goes back to being more balanced and more run-centric. They only had to go 17 yards in three plays, but you can give a big chunk of that drive to Kool-Aid McKinstry's punt return. Reichard in for the point after. Up and good. And even without Bryce Young, the tide adds another touchdown. Bryce Young frustrated on the sidelines with an injured right shoulder. His replacement comes in and scores from three yards out. People and live down there, and a lot of senior citizens lost everything, and that it's uh, really hard to take. Some yeah. good friends, Any, by the way. Anything you can do to help, please do so. So Alabama got a 45-yard punt return from McKinstry. Let's put it this way: the people down there are not watching this game. No, that's for sure. Will Reichard's got it teed up. AJ Green back waiting at the goal line. This will not be returned. So Ness, let's let's call this game for Arkansas right down. I mean, you're coming down, and Bryce Young has started off fast. He's out of the game now, but started off throwing for 170 plus yards in the first half. He reads the safety go to the right. He probably should have gone left on the first one. Ended up being an interception. That was his last mistake, though, for a while. Touchdown after a long pass, and then. What may be a disaster as it could be the play of the game in college football so far if Alabama loses the Heisman Trophy quarter. Yep. So here's the challenge for Arkansas. A year ago in this football game, it was a 17-14 game at the end of the half, and Alabama scored at the end of the half, and then scored when they got the ball to start the third quarter. Arkansas Stop has to do the same thing right offense now. Offense number 51, five-yard penalty. 
or seven. Can they take a 21 zip game, score now, they get the ball the second half, can they make it a game? That would be the perfect scenario for them, that's for sure. Mostly it's been punts today for the Razorback offense. A.J. Jefferson has not been the dynamic guy that we saw in this game last year. At least not so far. Two receivers to each side on first down at 15. Four man Alabama rush. K.J. is going to go long through the hands of his intended receiver. That should have been caught. And again, there's no trail on Burks. Got to check in with Jenny. Yeah, Bryce Young currently in the injury tent. I actually have an update right now. I don't have an update right now. I'm sorry right for that moment, guys. But trainers are going in and out and um, medical staff going in and out. His players going in and out and checking on him. Once I do have an update, I'll let you know. Yeah, with urgency, too. Right? That's the busiest tent yeah, exactly. in the world right now. The story is he's still in there. Jefferson. Landry should have caught that last pass, and now he's going to get sacked. Will Anderson and Jaheim Oates. Otis. But you can almost feel it, can't you, that Arkansas doesn't have a, mis a mismatch as a wide receiver? Right. The Alabama defensive backs, you know, they, they're a, an experienced unit. But right now, there is no one on this Arkansas field that scares them one bit. Now we're going to have four receivers to the right. Now the shift will come, but it's third down and 22. And there's a blitz coming on Jefferson. Little shovel pass on the inside to Sanders, and that doesn't fool anybody. To'o To'o's there. So is Brian Branch. And Bryce Young is heading to the locker room. Let's hope for college football and Bryce Young that he's able to play this season. Yep. You gotta wonder what's going through the Alabama's players' minds too. Everything. Totally. I mean, everybody connected with Alabama. Absolutely. Right now. Low snap. Fletcher handles it. Another nice punt and a fair catch called for by McKinstry as he runs out of bounds around the 41-yard line. Isn't it amazing that the story in the NFL this week was Tua Tagovailoa, yeah. former Alabama quarterback, and now the story of the day-to-day -day is Bryce Young. Good point. All right, Zuck, thanks. Here it's 21 to nothing. All Alabama so far, Arkansas can, has sputtered offensively throughout. Please join us all here at CBS Sports as we proudly celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. Going till mid-October. And here it's the very earliest part of October and there is question at quarterback for Alabama because of Bryce Young's injury earlier. So Jalen Milrow, the redshirt freshman out of Katy, Texas. Interesting play calling here right now. Yep. If you're Bill O'Brien, you don't want to make a mistake and get Arkansas back in the game. Illegal formation, by the way, for Alabama. And that'll come up with the flag. Too many in the backfield. They had two wing backs and no tight end. And Nick that Saban saw it too. Doesn't set offense. well with Coach Saban. More than four players in the offensive backfield. Andre penalty. First down. So it'll be first and 15. Milro has played, as I mentioned, he's thrown 18 passes, completed 12 for 86 yards and a touchdown. And he has seven rushes on the year for 75 yards and the rushing touchdown just moments ago. His first of his career on that three yard scamper to the end zone. Gonna throw here and Latu dropped it. So, so the rest of the guys on the field for Alabama right now are not helping out the new quarterback, right? First play, they line up in the wrong formation. Second play, nice little safe play here. Drop the ball. Just what I asked you, is it in their head right yeah. now we lost our leader? I, it's got to be. I guess, you know, I mean, I mean, right now you're thinking, like, how can I help the new guy is what you should be. That's what you should be thinking. Yes, not negatively. This throw is complete, and it's Isaiah Bond who's got a touchdown already today, and he's got 
a big first down here. Yeah, good throw. We're over here thinking, like, uh, how do they protect the ball, protect the quarterback? This night is 2022, right? <laughs> you go to Alabama, you got great receivers, it's there. You got the RPO offense, get them the ball. Pick up a 23 to the 41 of Arkansas. Gibbs now behind Milrow. He was in a pistol set. Milrow says, get over to my right side, will you? Gibbs goes the other way to the left and spins his way to the 35. At the six minute mark. Well, the question about this all year, the concern has been can this offensive line for Alabama look like Alabama? That time, JV and Cohen, center that time, Laughlin does a good job of opening that crack for the running back to get the positive yards. Second down and four. Gibbs. Dragged down from behind after only about a yard. Nice job defensively sliding behind the blocking to make the hit. Yeah, Jordan, Jordan Dominic that time, the transfer from Georgia Tech. Good pass rusher, but that time you could almost feel that this Arkansas defense is attacking the quarterback. They're coming at him, trying to force a mistake, but so far the only two mistakes have been other people, not the quarterback. Alabama already in field goal range. Third down and three. Millwell sets in the pocket. Throws incomplete. That's yeah, going to be an offense, though. Coming across Latu that time. Looks like Brini. And he grabbed him with, I think his left hand grabbed his jersey. Brini a chant transfer from Georgia. It's right here is the matchup, okay? Going out, yeah, he's cuts got back right in, there. he's got his hands all over him. Left hand at the end, but holding. Defense, number seven. Ten-yard penalty for his spot. Automatic first down. But that maybe was, this isn't buying it, but yeah, that's the case. But that was the chance to stop right there. There's still yeah. enough time in the half to come back. And by the way, Arkansas has all three timeouts. They did not charge Sam with that timeout. Snap was a little wide. They get it down. And Roydell Williams gets good yardage inside the 20. Don't forget coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. Adam Rook and BJ will break down the first half and have highlights from around the country. The big highlight in this one so far is a low light and that Bryce Young has been injured in this half. Arkansas couldn't get their guys off the field. Yeah, they called timeout there. Timeout. Arkansas. The first charge timeout of the half. So they'll pick that flag up. And they will be charged for the timeout this time. 440 remaining in the half. We'll take a timeout with them. We'll be right back. Four forty left in the half. Alabama driving with their backup quarterback. And the jumbo in at tight end and an extra offensive lineman. They love to pull play action off of this. Second down at five wide Williams up the middle, spins his way for a first down. So they're at the 15. Arkansas has already used one timeout. That was because they had too many guys out there. So Milro, the red shirt freshman. Inches. Yeah, well, they're going to say third down. Third and inches. And it's first down now. And that was Williams again. Third and short. Take your time. Mash it up front. Start way inside and then bounce it out by Rodell Williams. Rodell averaged about six yards a carry last year. Just under 300 yards rushing. So we've seen all three backs, Gibbs, McClellan, and Williams so far. Gibbs back in there now. At the 14, it's Jameer Gibbs. Gibbs is going to coast. Touchdown, Alabama. Yeah, I think Flag down. Javian Cohen, number 70, is turning around and going, really? He's got his hands on his hips. He's going, are you serious? That's holding? Look at him. <laughs> Holding. Offense, number 70. 
<laughs> He's still staring at him. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that's like 45 seconds gone. No, 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 that's not. Let's see. Let's find out. Right side over here. Here he is. Oh. I don't know. He just had him. Got to the outside, got his butt to the outside. It I, don't, him down. I don't know if that was a pancake, but it looked like a waffle to me, at least. <laughs> well, that, that's a way to stop a scoring drive. Illegal use of hands? I don't know, but watch him get to the outside. Illegal use of strength. <laughs> Might have had him hooked a little bit. Yeah, I, guess. I, could, I guess you should call that. He hooked him and turned him. No way. Down the middle, a little bit low, incomplete, intended for Holden. Legend out of Katy, Texas. Under Armour All-American, as almost all these guys on the Alabama team are. Some sort of All-American or five-star. Second and 20, fakes it to Gibbs, spins and goes right back to Gibbs. Gibbs broke one tackle. Jameer Gibbs stepped out of bounds, but he got a big chunk of that yardage back. Well, I tell you, this guy is going to be something at the next level. Look how he can do everything. Runs the ball, attacks it smart, lines up anywhere, He's got that burst. He does remind you of Alvin Kamara, Come on, yeah, he doesn't does. he? He's one of my favorite players. Bumper Poole saved a touchdown right Good there as you look for our pylon cam as he stepped out. But he's got it manageable remember down got, in distance. Remember we got a running quarterback in there right now. Third down and three. Milrow wants to throw for it. And with that flag in the end zone. Trayshawn Holden is the intended receiver, and Brini is going to be the guilty party. I'm not sure. It might have been on McLaughlin number three. It, one of the two, because that flag came out real early. Pass interference. Offense, number 10. 15 yard penalty. Go down. They're calling it on number 10. It would be bumper pool, but I don't right think it's. Oh, oh, it's it actually it's could Alabama. have been a pick, right? Yeah. It's on Alabama. It's a rub on Alabama. Yeah, absolutely. On Jojo Good call. I knew that flag was thrown early, and it made sense now. You watch it. You went out there, you picked it, and that's a good call by that secondary. So that backs it up to third down at 13. Arkansas fans saying, please stop these guys and hold them to a field goal at least. You're going to get quarterback draw here, aren't you? Nope. Quick screen to the outside. Right? And yep. JoJo Earl, the guy that just had the rub, rubs the end zone. One yard pass for a touchdown. How about that? 17 yards on the run and catch. Spread him out all over the field. It's two on two down here. That's where he goes. Quick screen, the blindmen come out, easy, safe throw, and then JoJo Rural looks healthy, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Rackard in for the point after. Up and good. Yeah, good blocking out on the perimeter. 59-yard drive and nine plays. There's Gary's guy, number 85, running somebody over. Touchdown, Alabama. It's 28 to nothing. This is not what Arkansas had planned for this red out today in front of 76,000 fans. Rocket Sanders. On the curry. And so now you just got to turn around and look at your teammates and go, we're playing with pride, and I'm watching the film on Sunday and Monday to see who isn't. Jefferson, quick slant, completes. Trying to get out to the edge, and Jason Hazelwood can't. Brought down by Terry and Arnold. And we have a Alabama player down. I think it's Brian Branch, maybe. It is. 
One of the leaders of their defense. Oh, he gets hit oh, by his man. own player. Yeah, toe to toe. Toe to toe, yes. You're collisioning for the receiver, and all of a sudden, you get hit by it. You're not prepared for that one. You're going for somebody else, and you take it. Brian Branch, an extremely gifted safety. Kind of a, the Minka Fitzpatrick mold. Physical, athletic. Actually came in Latin. Kind of beat out Malachi Moore, who won that position when they both were true freshmen. Shaken up here in Fayetteville, Arkansas, the junior out of Fayetteville, Georgia. And I'll help him over in the vicinity of the 10th, which has been too busy today for Alabama sideline. And Coach Saban coming over to pat him on the backside. And he is going to go in the tent. Meanwhile, back on the field, it's second down and five for Arkansas. Trying to get something going here in the final couple minutes with two timeouts remaining before halftime. The Binion note Sanders, beg your pardon, and stalemate right at the first down marker. Arkansas has not been able to attack the man-to-man -man coverage for the two corners for Alabama, McKinstry and Arnold. No balls to the outside with any pressure on either one of the man-to-man -man corners. We're going to keep it on the ground, try to get to the edge, and that's not happening. Nice job out there by Dallas Turner. Dallas Turner burst on the scene about halfway through the season last year for Alabama. Couldn't get him off the field. No. Drew Sanders came to Arkansas because he didn't know if he's get his job back from that guy. So it all works out. It worked out pretty well for both of them so far. KJ Jefferson steps up, fires down the middle, complete. Finally got a wide receiver involved. This Matt Landers. And they're trying to rip the ball out of his hands at the 35-yard line, first down. Defensive coordinator Pete Golding, very events, uh, aggressive. Outside, Landers against his zone. It's a zone blitz. Henry Toa Toa blitz. If you don't get to him, that means there's open space. One less defender out there. Pick up a 20 to the 35. Jefferson has time, now running out of it, and goes down. It's probably going to be a sack. It was right around the line of scrimmage where Tim Smith brought him down. And Alabama's, excuse me, Arkansas takes the timeout here. Good timeout. Nobody open, zone, nothing there. Tries to scramble and closed out. Fifty eight seconds left in the half Arkansas trying to get something on the board here before the end of the quarter. No gain on that last play it wasn't a sack as KJ got back to the line of scrimmage second down and ten. Sanders trying to get wide does got ten got fifteen got the sideline and got the official. Zone read. They're reading Will Anderson, number 31. If he thinks the back can get outside of him, he hands it off. He does. Looks like it's going to get stopped, but a missed tackle that time by Helms. And it finishes with the referee who doesn't miss. Good. Took a nasty spill. 26 yard pickup. I think they're going to make sure that the field judge is okay before they snap the ball. Kind of landed on his head, right? Yeah. If you're going to have precautions for the players in this situation, you wonder. Yeah, he wobbled a bit. Yeah, they're going to bring the training staff. Good idea. Out from Arkansas to cross all the way over the field. He's got a smile on there, but they got to have the concern. So a 26 yard pickup by Rocket Sanders got it down to the nine yard line. This was the end of the play. Rocket's almost trying to hold him up. He was yeah, trying to hold it right at the up. end. His head snapped back and hit the grass. And this is where somebody with a sharp eye on the sideline, one of the observers noticed it and said, let's take a look. Philip Davenport is our field judge and 
He says, I'm ready. I hope he is. Uh, he's got a smile. That, that's a good sign. Yeah. Meanwhile, the Razorbacks will bring it out to first and goal. They're at the nine yard line. They do have a timeout left, and Arkansas will get the kick to start the second half. Brian Branch is heading to what is a busy locker room injury wise for Alabama. That's not good for anybody. Sanders broke one tackle, got it near the six. Second down and goal. Good thing Arkansas, they gave Arkansas back that timeout. They've got one timeout, meaning right. they can call anything they want still. Three receivers in tight on the left. Rocket Sanders goes in motion to the right. Jefferson down the middle. Touchdown, Arkansas. Keytron Jackson. Boy, did the Hogs need that one. So Jefferson kind of double pumps here and the inside linebacker overruns it just a bit. Toa Toa had the area. You see him stick his hands up. He had the middle, but the pump to the outside drew him away. And then the second one into the air for a touchdown. Hey, they had to have it, right? They sure did. Get the ball to start the second half. Can they do it again and make it a 14 point game? That's Arkansas's battle cry at halftime. They have not played well in the third quarter. They're going to have to do it. They're going to take a peek at this review. Did the ball skip before it got there? Etron Jackson had a touchdown catch a week ago in the loss to Texas A&M, and this one's vital right now. 21 seconds to go. Yep. They are taking a look at it. Over the middle. Did it skip? I don't think so. Not on that one. I didn't see anything there. Gene, no. did you? No, I don't, guys. And you know what? The white gloves helped me in, in taking a look at it. The ball was on the one side of his left hand, but doesn't move at all. He's securing the football with both hands underneath. And really, if you take a look at the umpire, who does a great job with the U on his back, is spinning, and he's got a really good look. He immediately comes in with a catch as well. Uh, everything I see right now just says that we stay with the call on the field. The, the white gloves might have helped unless he was a little farther over near the A than the white gloves or the S, right? Then the white gloves would have camouflaged a bit. <laughs> yeah, but I think Gene makes the point. The umpire turns and looks right at it. Another look, yeah, hits him in the chest. Does it go down on the After ground? After review, can't see the anything. ruling is it stands. Touchdown. So something that Arkansas has desperately needed all day long getting points on the board KJ Jefferson with the touchdown toss. So they had five of them last year. There's a 75 yard drive. They needed badly. Yeah. Cam Little in for the point after. <laughs> Up and good. Nine plays, 75 yards. Keytron Jackson with a touchdown catch. It's 28 to 7, Alabama. Tonight at 7.30 Eastern on CBS Sports Network, catch more gridiron action. Wyoming looking to rebound against the Spartans of San Jose State. Chris Lewis and Robert Turbin will have the call for you tonight at 7.30, CBS Sports Network. Well, the whole first half, 65 yards until the last couple of minutes, 75 yards, as Gary said, they needed a long touchdown drive and they got it. <laughs> they needed a short touchdown drive, a middle touchdown drive around them. <laughs> they needed one. Well, don't worry about those later, but we'll worry about this guy. The Heisman Trophy winner, if you're just joining us, Bryce Young on this play, scrambling, trying to throw late, hitting the sideline and his shoulder. The next time he tried to throw a ball, that was the reaction, and then the exit to the Alabama locker room. So it's funny, he did not, he knew his shoulder was tweaked, but he didn't know to what extent until he came in and threw the next time. And that's when he got upset. Taylor Milrose coming in his stead, 
scored on a three yard touchdown and thrown a touchdown pass and in this case he'll take a knee to end the half. Arkansas has been brutal in the third quarter all year. They practiced third quarter. They got to show up. That's going to end the half here in Fayetteville. Alabama is Nick Saban wanting to play on the road like they used to play on the road and they have in this half as the second ranked team in the country has got the number 20 team in the country on the ropes. 28 to 7 is our halftime score. I'm sorry. Can we expect to see Milro out there the rest of the way? Yeah. Well, Bryce can't play. Miller was going to play. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Well, obviously a coach that's disgruntled well, by the whole situation. When you lose your quarterback, you, you get short with your answers, right? I guess so. That's the end of the half, 28 to 7 the score. Alabama in front. As we send you now to Adam Zucker on New York studio for the Geico halftime report. Zuck. All right, National. Home Depot SEC on CBS brings us into the third quarter at Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas, between the number 20 Hogs and the second ranked Crimson Tide of Alabama. 28 to 7. Alabama owned that first half. A good drive, though, at the very end of the second quarter. Got Arkansas on the board. They'll hope for more of the same. Bryce Young is on the field with a helmet on. Well, that's, great. that's encouraging. It's great news for Alabama fans, even college football fans. Let's go to Jenny for an update. Well, guys, you heard Nick Saban tell me that it was a shoulder injury going into the half. I just told, was told that he went in, got evaluated, and now he is questionable to return. So you see him out on the field now. Well, that's going to be interesting. He's at least got a smile on his face. <laughs> a couple of good signs, but we're going to have to just wait and see. They won't have the ball at first offensively as Reichard kicks off. And Arkansas will bring it out to the 25. Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson, Jenny Dell. A couple things, partner. First of all, you know, we got a game to play and a second half to play, and Arkansas will talk about how they can get back into it. But when you lose, arguably, the most visible guy our sport has, it's not good for anybody. No, I think both these teams are hurting at halftime. You know, Arkansas, number 20, yeah. down, gave up 28 points. And the other team thinking national championship is our quarterback okay. So both teams come out going, what's going to happen in the second half? And we'll find out because it's starting right now at the 25-yard line. A.J. Jefferson let him on a late scoring drive. His numbers were not good at all until the last really two and a half minutes of the second quarter. And Gary mentioned third quarter problems. Sam Pittman told us every game the third quarter seems to get worse for us. Minus 28 point differential in the third quarter. They'd like to turn that around today. This is a good start. By Eve Sanders, the rocket goes out for a first down out to the 37. There's no doubt that this Arkansas offense says, if we get a little warm up, Sam Pittman changed it up. I was out of practice Wednesday. They actually took halftime. They all went over and got a drink, <laughs> and he blew the whistle and said, we are going to get our legs ready. They actually practiced halftime. And so they come out with 20-yard sprints to try to warm things up. They've got a pretty good thing going here out near the 40-yard line, at least on their opening few snaps. Jalen Moody made the tackle on Rocket Sabres. I think Arkansas and their offensive coordinator, Kendall Bryles, believes that they have to run the ball to be able to throw the ball against Arkansas. Yeah, they're going to go for a little tempo right here. Second down and seven. Blitz coming. Jefferson throws to the outside. Lucky that wasn't picked off. Kool-Aid McKinstry broke up the pass intended for Matt Landers. Good coverage. Can't get deep. Said they've not been able to attack the corners. They still haven't been able to. Nope. So third down and seven. Burks last year had that 50-50 throw that he took for a touchdown. Remember that one? Yeah. Had a huge game. Problem is, he's playing for the Tennessee Titans. Yeah, first round pick. That's what happens in this league. Got to replace him. Jefferson running out of time from the backside. Throws late across the middle, and it's broken up incomplete. Knocked away by Arnold. Yeah, Terry and Arnold came into the Texas game. They can't get him off the field. 
Playing the other quarterback corner opposite McKinstry. Man-to-man -man coverage. Ball slightly behind. He's able to make the play with his left hand. Almost tucked it in there. That's a great defensive play. Yep. Ball was so you saw the receiver had to slow down. That's where man-to-man -man coverage makes the difference. Against zones, you can throw to the space. Against man-to-man, -man, they have to be accurate throws. Max Fletcher to punt. And look out the guy on the other end. He's forced a couple of fair catches today, but he's also seen one taken back 45 yards by this guy at the 14. Made the first wave miss. McKinstry ran into a wall as he hit the 34-yard line, but another good return. Got a flag down. I didn't see that until late. Bryce Young is coming out of quarterback. Boy, this is shocking me. The way he looked going in the locker room. Doing the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number 26. Half the distance to the goal, first half. So that negates a nice return. And you can actually almost feel the Alabama fans sigh of relief if he comes in here and throws a one, right? I mean, if he throws a pass, because they can remember back when they had it going and Tua injured that ankle. Right. You know, everything changed. He's not on the field, but he's trying to fire up his teammates. Milrow will take over. Yeah. I think Jenny's report of questionable is realistic, right? Yeah. Looked like it was going to go from questionable to probable, but it yes. isn't yet. Nice. Gibbs, nice job by Bumper Poole to stop him in his tracks. If you just joined us and you missed this in the first half, this was the play Bryce Young was injured on. Drew Sanders drawing a beat on him. Bryce trying to throw at the very last second and jammed that shoulder into the sideline and then showed his frustration heading to the tent and then finally the locker room. But he is back out with his teammates, with his helmet on, but his backup, Jalen Milrow, is at the controls. And he's going to throw. And he overshot. His intended receiver, Jermaine Burton. Well, the challenge for Alabama is what do they do? They've struggled running the ball, especially on the road. They go to the passing game, not quite in sync, right? Summers yeah. taking it more to the post. Quarterback's throwing it as a square end. Fans at halftime have had a chance to refuel their lungs a little bit. That's for sure. Third down and nine. Big play here. Here comes the blitz. Milrose in his own end zone, but he runs out of there. And he's got the first down and then slides. Like, that's generous. Slide? You sure is. I don't know what that was. Kind of a spinner slide there, was it? <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. Pass rush goes past him. He feels it. Knows where the first down is, and then he... <laughs> <laughs> well, little Twizzler at the end exactly. there. Exactly. Gibbs. Cut back. Oh, man. What a beauty. Yeah, exactly. The stretch play that time. Outside stretch. Getting it. Feeling it. Feeling it. Speed to the outside. And then find a crease. And he does. And the quickness with which he hits that cutback is... When you see it live in a person, I don't know if you're getting it on TV, but it's pretty quick. 61 yards now for Gibbs, second down and three. High snap. This time they've got him bottled up and might have gotten a yard out of it. Landon Jackson made the stop. Yeah, Zach Williams, number 56, the defensive end of that side, won his battle. You win your one-on-one -on -one battle, good things happen. Over here, you win, that forces it back the other way. Win, force it back the other way. Nice job. Yep. Well, they picked up a third and nine. They've got a third and four right here. McClellan now behind Milrow. It's a little sweep. And Gibbs isn't going to get there. Nice job by the Arkansas defense. He's about a half yard shy. It is. Coming from the left side, little pad touch pass. Can't quite get the block that time on the safety and gets it real, real close. Blair made the play and forces the punt. 
James Burnup in to kick for only the second time today. Bryce Stevens, he's had some big returns so far through the first month of the season as well. Burnup with that Australian punt and over and fair catch has already been called for and taken at the 21 yard line. So Arkansas got a stop, forced to punt. Ten and a half to play third quarter. They'll have it back on offense when we return. Now it's time for our hometown connection presented by T-Mobile. What do you got, Jenny? Yeah, well, Bumper Pool's connection to Arkansas, it runs deep. Now, despite growing up in Texas, Bumper attended his first Razorback game when he was just four years old. You see, his grandfather, father, two aunts, two cousins, and his sister are all graduates of Arkansas. His little brother, Harper, attends the university. Now, that sister I just mentioned, her name's Maddie. She's now Arkansas's assistant director of on-campus recruiting. Bumper told me being a diehard Razorback fan, it's a dream to play football here. He said that Fayetteville really is a home away from home for the pool family guys it sure is a family affair it's funny who walked into our meeting yesterday and gary said linebackers didn't look like you when it came into a meeting when sure. i played you know didn't hadn't shaved long hair he yeah. comes in look like he's getting ready to go to church absolutely he was clean shaven and ready for a tv <laughs> interview wasn't he yeah, he's a good player too it's a player <laughs> meanwhile his offensive teammates take over at the 22. Jefferson on the run. KJ got about 10, close to it anyway. Jenny also tells us Brian Branch is going to be out for the remainder of the game. Bryce Young is back on the sideline, but probably not going to play. KJ Jefferson, first three drives, not much. Last drive they really needed before the end of the half, and they got it for the seven points that they have on the board. Now we're five minutes into the third. They're trying to close the gap a little further, and Rocket Sanders has got a first down. Our final trend, Alabama 70% on their third down conversions. Arkansas converted one. And when you put together that last touchdown drive by Arkansas, that third and long screen down here that Alabama scores on, when they're really almost conceding a field goal on the play, was a huge play. Yep, no doubt. First down here, Jefferson pumps, goes down in a slant. On the run is Trey Knox. And Knox is all the way to the 30. So what you do is you fake the quick screen and you fake that you're going to block here and then you go to the scene. Nice play, nice design. You get the Alabama secondary on their heels and then you dash them right up the scene. For 36 yards to the 30. And now the throw the other way. This one's a little high intended for Landers. McKinstry was there to help break it up. Willie McKinstry, man-to-man -man coverage. You have to attack it. If you're going to beat Alabama, you have to attack their man-to-man -man coverage. You know, we've seen it in the past. You know, I mean, you got the, the Mike Evans doing it back when Johnny Manziel had him there. you got to have that receiver that can challenge that man-to-man -man coverage to the outside. Second down and 10. Collision in the backfield, and Will Anderson says hello to Rocket Sanders. Yeah, if you're going to not block number 31 and read him, you better read it fast because he's coming, and if you make the wrong decision... <laughs> They're lucky he didn't take the handoff. Cool. Wow. See, that's a... Yeah, I don't know who you're reading on that one, but 31 better be on the page that you're reading. <laughs> Third down and 14. Blitz coming from Toto. -to. Jefferson look out from behind, has to throw at the last second, and he completed it to Sanders. And he's got a first down. I don't know how he did that. I know, but you're six foot four, 240 pounds, might be one way, and he used every bit of strength to get rid of this one because he had Will Anderson on him, and he pulled through and made the throw. 16 yards on third and 14. You don't get many of those. Sanders on the inside run now. Goes for about four more. Especially if, if you get this play and you've got a chance to get a sack, that takes you out of field goal range and 
you know, you get the ball back, but completes it now, you know, for all intents purposes, unless it's a really long yardage, Arkansas is calling plays here now like they have four down territory. Defense. Oh, Alabama gets caught with an illegal substitution. So they're going to move it five yards closer. So whether you were talking about Will Anderson and the size and the size of KJ Jefferson, and that was like 6'4, 240 with 6'4, 240. Totally. And, yeah, you're, the you're, quarterback won that one. It was, didn't used to be that way, no. but this is, you know, he's he's Cam Newton big. There's no doubt about it. So the 12 man on the field penalty makes it first down and five for the Razorbacks at the 13 yard line. Popping through a hole and into the end zone is A.J. Green. Touchdown, Arkansas. So Arkansas has caught a break. The Alabama quarterback is injured. And they're taking advantage of it. They're making a football game. You said score at the end of the second. Yep. Try to get one to start the third. It's not quite the start of the third, but this will do for him. Big opening off the left side, and Green had nothing but Green in front of him until he hit the red of the end zone. Extra and, point is good. And it might have looked corny running the sprints and practicing halftime, but what Sam Pittman was doing was emphasizing we're not going to lose the third quarter anymore, and his team has responded. Capping a 78-yard drive, A.J. Green, 28-14. Business was picking up during that last time out here around Razorback Stadium because their team has inched back into it, 28-14. Oh, yeah, one more stop by this Arkansas Razorback defense, and this place is going to really feel like You're right. <laughs> So the dilemma for Bill O'Brien is, you know, with number nine in the game, he had a matchup that he just could depend on. Right. And felt pretty easy. He could score anytime he wanted to. Now that matchup's not there anymore. Or if he's going to use it, he's risking it with an inexperienced quarterback. And unless number nine runs on the field, right? Exactly. Bates. And it's an onside kick. And they've got it. Sam Pittman said we were going to pull out the stops. He just did it with an onside kick, and his kicker recovered it. He's stolen a possession. He's emphasized the third quarter, and his team has responded. And he said, I love in special teams. When we do something different, I know on that sideline, Nick Saban is looking at his coaches and going, why weren't we ready for that? You can't do it much better than this. The Perfect. kicker is the hero. He just waited on it, waited for the last bounce, and covered it 11 yards past where he kicked it. <laughs> A fake field goal last year against Alabama, an onside kick today. I'm going to check if it went 10 yards. Jake Bates with the kick. We'll watch it. Remember, it's not where the feet of the players are, is. It's where the ball is. You can't reach across the ball line. It's 11. And he, and he did not. No, it's 11 yards. Good to check. Just keeps out of his own way until the last second. And then said, I got it. Boy, the temptation of grabbing that ball earlier must have been really strong. Absolutely. Gene Steratore is with us. Gene, you seeing what we're seeing? I am. And I think the other thing they may be doing just to check mark the box is to make sure that no blocking occurred before the ball was legally able to be touched within that 10 yards. And by the angles that I've seen, that also was, uh, was done very well by the kicking team. Sam is saying, you know, you're taking our buzz away right here. <laughs> well, that's a good point. I did not know that. Gene brought that up. So the, the point is that it, it would be a penalty. It's a reviewable penalty. And they're looking to see if there was a block before the ball crossed the line. It's close. 
close. Might have been simultaneous. Yes, it's very, very close. Boy, it's very close. That ball was hovering above that line. Again, it, it was called illegal on the field. Right. It would be kind of hard to turn it around. But... Well, it's right at that line when the blocks are really unnecessary on the play. Yeah, the Bama players are so far back. Here's a call. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Jake Bates is the man of the hour for the midway point of the third quarter. I mean, it was inches either way. Again, called legal on the field. The ball was hovering over the line. It's not when he catches it. It's when the ball gets to the line. I think they got it right. So now can the offense take advantage? Good field position at the 46. Slip screen to Hazelwood on the outside. Got it to midfield, maybe to the 49. So we check in with Jenny. Yeah, I talked to head coach Dan Pittman. He said he walked into the locker room at halftime and he looked at his team and he said, we're playing Ala freaking Bama. Maybe he used different <laughs> words right there. He said, we're playing with no emotion. So his goal was to come out here in the third quarter and fight. And that's exactly what they're doing, guys. Were they ever. Sanders fighting to get back to the line of scrimmage on this carry. Just a little point here. If Alabama can get a stop, the replay actually gave the Bama defense a blow. You know, maybe a three-minute three, three minute blow because they had just left the field and they would have had to run back on. That's what I was saying about Sam Pittman saying, you're killing our buzz. We want to get going on offense. I thought you were talking about the fans, but the buzz <laughs> that the Alabama defense was drinking Gatorade, they go, what? Third down and six. So will they get the stop? Jefferson in trouble. Throws late and got it complete. Keytron Jackson, first down. So the plays that were being dropped in the first half, the receivers are now helping out. KJ Jefferson runs up in the pocket again. That's the second time in the second half he's made plays out of sync in the pocket. 17 yard pickup on a third and six. Back to Rocket Sanders straight up the middle. And he's got eight more to the 25. And Marco Helms brought him down. So Rocket Sanders came to Arkansas as a wide receiver, transition to running back. And the Rocket fits, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Came in leading the SEC in rushing. This time he loses one. Jaheim Oates. Otis, and I'm going to stop the big fella on the inside. He plugs up a lot of ground. Third down and three again. Jefferson momentarily comes up under center. He's going to stay there and go straight ahead. Quarterback keeper, and he's got the first down. He lost about 15 pounds in the offseason, but he is still a load. Obviously, one of the very few times that Arkansas will go under center. They do that because they can get the push on the quarterback sneak. You go shotgun, get no push. Yep. So four runs and a couple of passes has covered 32 yards in the last couple minutes as we approach five minutes in the third quarter. Now Arkansas driving. KJ Jefferson all the way to the 15 before he's run out of bounds. Well, there's the zone lead, and this time you read Dallas Turner, number 15. Looking at the handoff, look at it. He's got his eyes right here, okay? He's got his eyes right there. Do I do it? Do I do it? Nope, I got it. Gets it out to the outside. Very positive play. This time he keeps it, took it right out of his tailback's hands to the five. Jefferson. 
has got the Arkansas offense in gear. Look how smart this read is by K.J. Jefferson. He gets an attack not only from Dallas Turner, but also the corner blitz at the same time. So he knows he has to keep it and not go wide, but take it inside. Got Alabama's defense on their heels a little bit. Jefferson, first and goal at the five-yard line. Rocket Sanders with him in the backfield. They're coming. Man to man coverage by Alabama all over the field. Blitz is coming. Low snap. Sanders trying to weave his way inside. Maybe got one. Second down and goal. So the onside kick started this. And it's carried it down inside the five-yard line of Alabama. So, you know, the no huddle up tempo doesn't always have to go fast, but it does keep. If you don't substitute, keeps Alabama from substituting inside. Out of five on the play clock. Jefferson going to get the snap off. Barely. Sanders cuts back. Stuffed well Boy. again inside. Tough sledding in there for number five. Yeah, Isaiah Hastings. I think it was Hastings in that shirt, 99. I believe stuff to play inside. Make piles. Make piles if they're those defensive linemen. All right, you got a quarterback. And you One got, of the best runners in the country from that position. Do you run him here at third down and goal? Well, I, I also think you got fourth down, too. Remember, you got a backup quarterback in on the other side. I think you got two downs. The 11th play of the drive is right here at the three yard line. Jefferson keeps it, doesn't get it. And that's fourth down. Lost yardage on the play. Attacking defense. Defensive coordinator Pete Golding sends him again off the edge right here. Attack. Can't get the mesh cleanly. And it looks like at least Sam Pittman says third quarter. A lot of time. Third three. Let's, let's put three up there or let's try another fake. <laughs> Cam Little, who had the heartbreak at the end of the game last week when he hit the top of the upright from 42 yards out. Look at him look over. Why would he be looking at the bench to see if the fake is on or not? Look safe, take the three. 22-yard field goal attempt is up and good. Maybe to restore the confidence in his kicker, take the sure thing, as Gary said. Still a lot of ball left. 16 and a half minutes to go. It's down to 28-17, Alabama, late third. So 17 unanswered points by Arkansas has them back in the ball game. Don't forget later in the game, we'll have the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. Well, the onside kick led to three. They got close. Jake Bates. I don't know if he's got the smile off his face yet, but I'm assuming he's going to kick this one off. Yeah, that would be the odds, right? <laughs> I looked at you to see if I know. you were assuming what I, I know. Well, I can't guess with these guys anymore. And this one will not be returned. So out to the 25 comes the Alabama offense. Invesco brings you today's scholar athletes. Darren Dalcourt for Alabama and Trey Knox, who just had a big catch on that last drive for Arkansas. Invesco proud to support student athletes on and off the field with a donation of $1,000 to both Alabama and Arkansas's general scholarship funds. So no one preaches the process and one play at a time more than Nick Saban, right? Ignore the surroundings, do your job. Let's see if they can. Whoa, high snap. Somehow, Milro got away, but not too far. Drew Sanders brings him down after a couple yard pickup. I don't know if it was a bad snapper, he just took his eyes off it. It was kind of fast, right? Yeah. Got to him quick. 
handled it, but as you said, for nothing, basically. That was all Bryce Young in Alabama when he left the game. It's changed in a hurry with him on the sideline. Milrow's going to keep this. Cuts it outside. Almost an offensive face mask. So, and he's dragged out of bounds. So remember this, though. The changeup is not really a changeup for Arkansas. The running quarterback in the zone read is what they face all spring ball. That's what they see every day. So even though it's a changeup for Alabama, Arkansas says, yeah, we practice against No row. Scrambling around in trouble. Flags down. We're going to have a holding call, but it's thrown out of bounds anyway, and they'll decline that and take the punt. Another stop. Started on first down with the mishandled or off center oh, snap and offense number 70. We're going to get the ball back. Nowhere to go. J.B. on Cohen. I think it was 70, back. wasn't it? No staring at the ref this time. He knew he held him on that one for sure. So. Bryce Stevens waiting on the punt. A burning. Whoa. That snap hit somebody, and Burnham's got to just cover it back at the three yard line. What happened there? It hit Henry Toa Toa, I believe, number 10. It's like the center anticipated the kick, the punter who likes to rugby it to the right. It was almost leading him, and I believe he hit the up back. The long snapper Hibbett. It's right in the shadows. It was hard to see. Yes, it hit him. Hit the up back, and it was Henry Toa Toa. It's almost like he was leading the punter to the right, and he led it right into the up back, blocking on the play. This will show us a better angle. There it is, just sideways. Look how far off line that was. It's like he was anticipating him to go to the right. It's hard to believe he could be that far off with the snap. A major snafu by the special teams has given Arkansas a gift inside the four yard line. First and goal. KJ Jefferson all by himself in the backfield. They did, first and goal. They didn't throw down here last time. Will they do it this time? Sanders joins him in the backfield. He gets the carry. He gets the touchdown. Uh, what a turn of events. Onside kick for points. A three and out and a special teams disaster for Alabama. Sanders just kept driving with those legs on the inside until he was across the goal line behind his big eaters up front. And they're going to go for two. Of course, 28-23. Go for two. And Nick Saban tied his shoes on the sideline. <laughs> Stop play for a second. <laughs> so a two-point conversion from the three-yard line. The previous play is under further review. They're reviewing the touchdown. He was stopped, lost a little momentum, but I thought he was pushed in after that, didn't you? I did. Stopped, loses momentum. Keeps driving. Now it's a pile up. And yeah. There he is. He fell on his little. own offensive lineman there. But I don't think he hit the ground. Did he stop enough to put his knees on the ground? No, he kept pushing and pushing. I don't see how they're going to turn that around. Just kept the legs driving, as I said the first time. But okay. we'll take a look at it. He kind of dove out, landed on him, and then gathered his left foot and pushed again to score. Gene Steratore is with us from New York. Gino? Looks pretty clear to me, guys. I, I think from the sky cam shot, I was looking at the left leg. 
uh, to see if it may have slipped down there that knee before he pushed forward. Doesn't appear that it did at all though and I think they'll stay with the touchdown that they ruled on the field. Got face masked in the process. <laughs> Didn't see that one either. John Bibles our replay official. Scott Walker is our referee. This is the call. After review, the ruling on the field stands. And now it's two-point conversion time. So one play has changed the outlook of this football game. Arkansas has taken advantage. The one play could change the landscape of college football. You're not kidding. And one player being out could change the landscape yep. of college football. So that was a four yard run by Sanders to get the touchdown. He's not in there right now. KJ Jefferson and Trey Knox. Knox now moves up to the tight end spot. Momentarily was in the backfield for Jefferson. So this is KJ's run or a throw all the way, unless somebody joins him. They fake the sweep, and now quarterback draw. Jefferson not going to get there. He got to the one. To'o To'o came flying out over the top and prevented the two-point conversion. So a third quarter that has been such a disaster all year for Arkansas, they've owned it. This was close, too. You see number 10 come in over the top and won't allow the two-pointer. My point is. Zook, special play there. Some special plays here has changed the complexion of our game. This guy, number 39, has been involved. And at this point, kicks deep. Alabama will come out to the 25-yard line. But an amazing sequence of events in the third quarter. First, it was Bates. The onside kick goes 11 yards, covers it himself. That lets the offense get going for Arkansas. And then special teams, not so special on that one. An errant snap that sent Bourbon all the way down, the punter inside the three. And then Rocket Sanders does the rest, driving and driving and driving and getting to the end zone. The only thing that didn't go right was a two-point conversion. The Razorbacks have the fans back in it. They have controlled the third quarter, as Gary said. They went from 28 down to 28-23. So here we go. 15 minutes, 19 seconds to play. And remember, the Bama advantage was throwing the ball. Can they run it? Will they run it, or will they have to go back to the pass? They don't get anything there because Bumper Pool stops Jameer Gibbs in his tracks. That should bring the third quarter to a close. Well, Alabama might get one more snap off here. Nope. That'll end three. And what a third. A disaster for Alabama. And Sam Pittman pulled out all the stops on the other sideline. I don't think you want to go away now. I hope you didn't earlier. We still got a fourth quarter to go. And number 20 and number two are in a five-point game. The Home Depot SEC on CBS enters the fourth quarter at Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And now we got a game. 28. 23. Fans in it for this final stanza. High snap. No room trouble. Gonna go long. Man out there. Broken up at the very last moment. Nice play by McLaughlin, and the crowd goes wild again. Burton had him beat. Could have been a touchdown ball, was badly underthrown. Watch, the receiver has to slow down, slow down, slow down, practically stop and allows for coming. Jerry Barton says, if you'd have let me, I'd have had one. Yep. A poor throw, or Alabama scores a touchdown. And that's third and ten. Alabama moved. They see Latham, I think. That was a call. You can barely hear it. The referee over the crowd right now. That was part of the story in the Texas game. Penalties for Alabama. But right now, it's more than that, isn't it? They, they don't have their main offense. They're a passing team now. 
and they don't have their trigger man. Third and 15. Milroy steps up in the pocket. He's going to take off with it, and he's getting the first down and a lot more. This is what he can do. Milroy might have scored. Did he step out? At the two, I believe. Ness incredible on this play. Bumper Poole is spying the quarterback on the play. He's not covering anybody. He's covering four. Watch this. He gets him. He misses him. You put your best tackler on their quarterback, and he misses him. And he goes 77 yards to the three-yard line. And now he throws, and he's batted in the air. Could have been intercepted. Sanders was close. And let's flag down. Conference among the officials here before the call. The ball was tipped, so that might have something to do Offside. with it. Offside. Defense, number 50. After this is the ball, first side. They called the defensive tackle, Eric Gregory, offsides. He'd line up in the zone? He must have. I didn't really see any movement down there. How big would that have been if this tip ball would have been caught? Oh, boy. I didn't see anybody offside. I didn't either. Listen, At any rate, listen. just outside the one. No roll. Handoff. Going to be a lost yard here. Bumper Pool made the initial contact. The only thing I can think of is that Arkansas only had 10 men on the field. The number 50 was trying to run in, and he was offside. At any rate, they're back about where they started at the three after that tackle for loss by Poole. Jalen Milrow in there because... Bryce Young was hurt earlier in the game. Takes the snap, gives off to McClellan, who can just walk in. Touchdown, Alabama. Well, Jalen Milrow did what he does best. Passing game wasn't there. Bumper pool was there to spy on him. But the athlete beats it, sets it up, and look at that blocking inside. Well, the key play. As is Gary said, what he does best on a third and 15, he went 77 yards. And then they didn't have to go very far for McClellan. Rackard's extra point is good. And as Eric Gregory was running in late, Arkansas on that first down, it really was offsides. They had 10 men on the field, and Gregory was running in as the 11th. So they have 10 men out there, but right here, you're going to have an appearance of one more player right at the end. So he is offside. Only offsides by about 15 yards. Yes. But for Alabama, more importantly, the walk in by McClellan caps a 75 yard drive, 77 of which was Jalen Milro. Now, now let's take a look at the GMC Game Changers. And KJ Jefferson. Did a little bit of everything, didn't he? Used his eyes to open up the passing lane. Used his athletic skill to buy some time on the quick screen and hit the seam. And then used the offense to read, see the corner blitz, and run the offense. A little bit of everything from K.J. Jefferson. That third quarter was K.J. Jefferson that we saw so many times a year ago. The last five drives, pretty impressive. Now it's Alabama kicking back off after a sensational run by Jalen Milrow. Got him close. Jace McClellan got him in for the score. Now we still got 14 minutes to go. 35-23. And this won't be returnable. So they bring it out to the 25-yard line. So 
You know, you'd like to have everybody healthy and everybody with their frontline players play, and you don't like to see anybody get injured. But the next 14 minutes could swing the whole SEC West for the oh, rest totally. of the year. Totally. How about Milrow? Late in the half, he had a third and 18. Right. Throws the quick screen for a touchdown. Here, third and 15. Goes 77 yards. <laughs> He's made two big third down plays to keep Alabama in the game. And now they've got the lead a little more comfortably than they did have. And still, it's going to be Arkansas with every opportunity in the world with a really good quarterback and their running game that started to pick up now. Let's see what they do. And here's the guy, K.J. Jefferson, running over people for 12 yards. First down. I like when we talk to K.J. Jefferson yesterday. You asked him, are you fast? How fast are you? And he said, I got between the tackle speed. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> what he did right there. Now Sanders trying to pick his way for a couple more. Test your knowledge here quickly with today's athletic trivia question, which is, who's the only Arkansas head coach to defeat a Nick Saban coached team? Remember, Alabama has won 15 straights in this series. Sam Pittman lost to him last year, 42-35. Now it's 35-23. And the Hogs need more points here pretty soon. And that one's batted down and completes. And Malachi Moore saved a big play there. Arkansas had a hot read on the play. If he gets it over Moore's hands, that's going to be a big play for Arkansas. Watch to the outside. Breakout, hot, knocked down by 13, or that would have been big. And now it's a third and eight that's big for Arkansas. A.J. Green's going to flush out of that backfield. So it's five receivers and K.J. Jefferson with a blitz coming. Not going to get away. Got back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. So all week, the Alabama rushers have been told, do not go past the quarterback just for this reason right here. He's going to pull it down, be ready. Keep your eyes up. Keep your eyes on the quarterback. And if you do, he'll run right back to you. That possession didn't do him any good at all. Punting time for Arkansas. You'd like to keep it out of Kool-Aid McKinstry's hands if you're Max Fletcher. And he did, knocked it out of bounds, but at least no return. They're going to spot it at around the 28-yard line. With 12-29 remaining in the ball game, second-ranked Alabama has got the ball back in a 12-point lead. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Invesco QQQ, Jersey Mike Subs, GMC Sierra, and by Gillette. Beautiful day in Fayetteville, Arkansas today, and some beautiful coverage of today's game provided by Goodyear. Well, Jalen Milrow has done it with his legs, but it was off of a pass call that he did it. He was in the pocket and took it deep. Arkansas scored 23 straight after Alabama already had a 28-0 lead, and their Heisman Trophy winning quarterback goes out. That 77-yard run set up the last touchdown, as Gary just mentioned. And now we've got 12 and a half to go, and they've got the ball back up 12. Jameer Gibbs, big opening up the middle, and he is going to be gone. Nobody's going to catch Jameer Gibbs all the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. 72 yards. I tell you, somebody picked the wrong lane. Both the safety and the corner go outside from this side. See the corner? The, the safety, that's the safety. The corner's outside of him, gets blocked inside. Bumper pool gets taken and pushed by the hole, and he's gone. Seth McLaughlin, number 56, gets the key block. And as Brad knew, once he got in the open field, no one's going to catch him. Goes over 100 yards on the ground, 131 for 
Jameer Gibbs and a sensational strike of 72 for number one. Alabama starting to take control now. Here on CBS, and that follows our CBS football doubleheader. You might have to take a nap just from watching TV all day tomorrow on CBS. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, Bumper Poole, the great middle linebacker for Arkansas, was in the middle of both of those runs. Just a little bit out of control. One time, he can't handle the quarterback draw. The next time, Seth McLaughlin pushes him past the play with a great block. Here's the first one. Watch it. He's spying on the play this time. He's right there. He's got the quarterback all the way. He's got him. He's got him. Run right have. past him. Yep. Takes it for the big play. And on the run next time, he's got the middle of the field this time. He's got to do it again. Can he do it again? Gets pushed back at the last second past the play. No coverage from the secondary. They go outside. And Alabama blocks it perfectly that time for a touchdown. Two seventy plus yard runs in the last five plays for Alabama has swung the tie back big time in their favor. And that's AJ Green. No gain. Haven't called his name yet, but Brian Young that time, 47, came in and made a nice play that time. Fought all the way across his block, closed off the running lane. Nothing. Been a little bit banged up, so to see him out there is good news for their defense. Jefferson pumps to the left. Throws on the run, completes it to Knox, who gets knocked down by Toto. -to. And Malachi Moore, but he's got a first down unless the flag brings it back. An eligible player downfield, offense, number 51. Five yard penalty, second down. So anytime your quarterback is a running quarterback and they sense he's going to run, you could see it. Leads with his shoulder and arm, and then Toa Toa comes across on the other side. So Stromberg, the center. Downfield, backs it up five yards, second down to 15. Yeah, they, they might stop this and look for targeting on Henry Toa Toa, don't they? The game is being stopped for a medical observer. Well, is somebody stunned on the play? Apparently. Maybe it was one of them. Yeah. It was Knox. He got hit twice on that play. First by Malachi Moore and then by Henry Toa Toa. Got hit in the left side of the helmet and then the right side yep. of the helmet. Was being in a boxing match. So they're having a look at Trey Knox. They had the big pass play that Gary just showed you a little while ago. Gene Steratore is along with us, fourth member of our crew. Gene? Yeah, I think it's a, it definitely not a target, uh, the shot here with the shoulder, with the side of the helmet. And then when number 10 White comes in, it's a side, uh, head up uh, and not crown either. But I think it's a good, safe practice to see two hits like that on a player's helmet uh, to stop and make sure that he's okay. They're having a chat with Trey, and I'm sure he's saying, no, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, how, however, they, they always do, don't right. they? Right. That's exactly what the point I was trying to make. Yeah, they always do. You were telling us about how many times they've asked you, right. are you okay? Yeah, I'm going back in. A little different, but back then, that's for sure. Now, despite what happened to Tua, they try. And I think that underlined to everybody, they got to be more cautious right. with every player out there. College and pro. Yep. And he's coming out for a play for sure. And maybe for the rest of the game.
And Nathan Bax is going to take Trey's spot. And with the medical stop, you have to come out for a play. It's like losing your helmet, basically. So second and 15. Wide receivers today for Arkansas have just not come up with enough big plays. And this screen pass is blown up. KJ Jefferson gave up on that one in a hurry. Yeah, and that time Jalen Moody read it perfectly, number 42. Nothing there. Had to dump it. So it's been streaks 28 straight for Alabama, then 23 straight points for Arkansas. Now two quick long touchdown runs of well, a long, uh, long run that got him close to a touchdown of 77, and then Jameer Gibbs, 72-yarder. And that's where we stand at 42-23. 11 minutes to go. A.J. Jefferson waits too long. Still trying to drag his way out of there, but he's not going to get out of the grasp. Well, it might be a late penalty on Toa Toa there, a dumb one. Going to keep Arkansas football. He just shoves a player, kind of a celebration shove, and he's going to get called on it. <laughs> There's the reaction. Yeah, that was that was a bad play. They're off the field. After the play, personal foul, late hit, defense number 10. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Not off the field now. Play ends. It's a sack for sure. Going down. <laughs> And then the push from behind. Yep. That's kind of dumb, isn't it? Yep. Toe Toe knows it, but a little too late for it now. Stromberg gets up and points right at him. I mean, geez, he comes from 15 yards away. Whistle's blowing, and he knew it. He didn't know it before he did it, but right. he knew it after. Here's a quick throw out the flats. Hazelwood broke one tackle. And a stiff arm at the end to pick up another first down. Yeah, that's a lack of discipline that, you know, these games are, you think they're over. They're never over, are they? Uh -uh. A quick screen to the outside. Makes one guy miss. Good positive play. And flags down on this one. The Indian going nowhere. Yeah, too many men in the backfield again. It's the third one of the game. Illegal formation. Offense number 75 was not lined up on the line of scrimmage. This penalty is declined. Second down. By the way, Trey Knox is back in the lineup after coming out for that one play. Should have mentioned that before. Before we asked you the trivia question, which was, who's the only Arkansas head coach to defeat a Nick Saban coach team? Houston Nutt, one of our comrades, did it twice. But Nick was at LSU at the time, not at Alabama. Since Nick got to Alabama, Alabama hasn't lost to Arkansas. A.J. Jefferson throws a strike complete to midfield. Nice, strong hands there. You know you're going to get hit. It's coming. Keytron Jackson staying all the way with it. Terry and Arnold's going to close on it, but strong hands. He stays with it. Nice job that time. Keytron picks up 17 with that grab. And Arkansas is back in Alabama territory, though only by a yard. And it's a little more than a yard now. Dominion got a couple. Time is of the essence. 15 straight times. Alabama has won this matchup. Let's go back to 2006, the last time they were able to beat the Tide. KJ Jefferson, incomplete. Intended for Matt Landers, and there's a flag down, so McKinstry, Kool Aid. I guess he had his hand on the cooler. McKinstry wasn't ready on this play. He was looking around at the inside. Arkansas quick snaps it. He Passing never first. gets in phase Defense. and costs yeah. him a penalty. 15-yard penalty from the previous He's spot. staring. He's trying to get the call. Time. And all of a sudden, Arkansas quick snaps it and goes with the fade. Well, that's going to move it inside the 35. Two bad mental mistakes by Alabama. Toa Toa's penalty. They're off the field. That time, Kool-Aid doesn't get ready. And it costs them. Down.
Dominique Johnson comes back in to the Arkansas backfield with a first down just outside the Alabama 32. He gets the carry. And a nice game. Dallas Turner made the tackle. Down to nine minutes, though. Should be a face mask, should it? He broke the tackle. AJ Jefferson makes McKinstry pay at the end of it. Dallas Turner, number 15 on number one. Who was face masking who? We'll find out. Well, both of them did it. <laughs> right? Who are you calling that on? Now? I'm calling on a defense. Okay. Let's see what happens. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 15. The distance to the goal, automatic first down. It's like when my kids, he started it. <laughs> There's the first face mask. There's the second face mask. KJ Jefferson started it. And he was the last guy to let go, and it goes on Turner. So half the distance of the goal is going to put it inside the 10. But the clock is running. Hazelwood in motion and last sets up on the right side as Jefferson wants to come back the other way with the football. He's not going anywhere with the football. Jaim Otis again, the big presence on the inside. And now KJ Jefferson's down. Devontae Lawson, number 32, holds his position, forces him back inside. And when you say big, it's big, even though. Otis has lost 70 pounds. He He's still weighs big. about 350 yes. something, doesn't he? And right on the shoulder and the right side of his head on KJ Jefferson. And so Cade Fortin comes in at quarterback. So we're in the backup quarterback situation for both teams. Started out in North Carolina, transferred from USF. Wants to throw and lobs it to the corner. Broken up. Intended for Matt Landers again. McKinstry back there. This time he was paying attention. I think Nick Saban is still saying, why was the face mask just on us? There was two of them there. McKinstry in good position, great phase, and Landers basically has to knock it down. Yeah. It would have been intercepted. Got to get ready. When you're playing corner, you've got to get in position. You they, start late, he's by you. Jefferson's back in after one play by his backup. Third and goal, but it's outside the 15. Pumps to the right, goes to the end zone, overshot everybody. It's fourth down. 19-point game, Sam Pittman's going to take three and make it a two-score game. Two scores, two-point two plays. That's a lot of twos, which is 7.41 to go. I don't think you have much choice. You're not going to pick up. You don't think you're going to pick up 15. You're going to have to take the three and hope you can score twice. 34-yard field goal attempt by Cam Little, who hit one earlier from 22. We saw Florida make a run at it late like this, didn't we? Yeah. And Cam's got this one as well. Cam would have loved one just like that a week ago. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. So they take the three. 42-26. Scan of the field here at Razorback Stadium from our AT&T 5G pylon cam. It only takes one battle to change your life. Don't miss Sada Lathan's directorial debut in a new movie on the come up. Now streaming exclusively on Paramount Plus, rated PG-13. Go to ParamountPlus.com and try it for free. Alabama will put the hands team out, anticipate or at least discourage Arkansas <laughs> from trying the onside kick. Remember, Jake Bates already had one successful 
in the third quarter. Yeah, that was a surprise. This won't be though, right? I don't think so. Well, Jameer Gibbs is standing around the 17 yard line. If they pooch kick it, or if he kicks it away, he'll just let it go and bring it out to the 25. Which is what they'll do. So Alabama 738 to go playing with a two score lead two heavy scores as Gary called them <laughs> eight and eight Bryce Young came out chin strap tightened helmet on in the second half but hasn't seen any action but he has been cheering his teammates on does it does it feel like relatively that might be positive that he doesn't have it in a sling I, I think so but I don't know. I think it also shows that he I didn't know. want to stay in the locker room and wanted to show a little. No, I, I agree with that. Out. We're not supposed to speculate bad, but can we speculate good? I don't know why we can't. Yeah. We're looking at the bright side of things. Exactly. One of the bright sides, they got this guy playing well, tailback, but Bumper Pool says, you're not getting away from me this time. Yep. Let's check in with Jenny. Yeah, a little, mil a little more on Milrow coming from uh, Bill O'Brien there. Quick little scouting report from him. Great legs, strong arm, can't throw outside. But he did say he wouldn't be here if we didn't like him. Of course, this is Alabama, guys. Yeah, just another you know, player of the year type guy in what, whatever state these guys come from. Yes. Pass off the left side. He might be gone again. Jameer Gibbs. He's already got a 72-yarder. He's got another one. Touchdown, Alabama. This one goes for 76. Bryce Young's going to go to meet him when he gets to the sideline. Well, he showed it all there, but the line started it. They started it, creasing it. They blocked down, blocked down, and then kick out to the outside. That creates it, and Delcourt comes around. Excuse me, McLaughlin comes around and makes a key block again. I'll tell you, Seth McLaughlin's had himself a game here today. Yep. Records, extra point is good. Well, Jameer Gibbs, we highlighted him in the offense for Alabama other than Bryce Young and said he's the most dangerous guy they have. I think he's proven the point today. Two touchdown runs of 70 plus and number one has number two in command. Well, two huge runs. In fact, the last three runs by Alabama, they had drives and runs of 77, 72 by that guy, and 73, or 75 by that guy, Jameer Gibbs. Yeah, you don't want to give that guy space. I don't think so. <laughs> Remember we said at the end of the third quarter, Alabama had minus one yard of total offense. Now they're running for 300 yards over the game, 221 in the third, fourth quarter, basically, wow. right? I mean, what a rushing attack. And the big runs, I think the key one was the quarterback Milrose run, wasn't it? Yeah. Third and 15, that's when Arkansas really believed one stop and we can make this really, really uneasy for Alabama. After that play, they kind of seemed to lose their heart. So, Cade Fort is gonna stay at a quarterback for Arkansas. And even though KJ Jefferson came back in for a couple more plays. Looks like he's going to be his game the rest of the way here. AJ Green lost his mouthpiece as he got hit. I think this guy's going to be a weapon of choice for right. Alabama the rest of the way. And, and Alabama fans, I mean, they go, they, that's Kenyon Drake. Uh, for me, my eyes, uh, this is an Alvin Kamara type back. Both of them are pretty similar in the NFL, by yeah. the way. Well, Jameer, I mentioned, was Georgia Tech's about their only offense last year, it seemed like, in a three win season. And when he transferred over, having watched him play at Georgia Tech, my thought was, when he gets it figured out yep. and gets 
and, little blocking. And, and gets introduced to his new teammates right. he's going to be pretty good well this this transfer portals worked out pretty good for <laughs> Alabama yeah you think years, don't you think <laughs> she was through Williams last year this guy this year two breakaway players Wharton going deep over shoots everybody and completes fourth down single game rushing Oh, some good names right there. That. <laughs> there's a lot of couple pay, of, a lot couple of high, checks. Couple of Heisman Trophy winners in there. I, I was thinking there's a, a lot of accountants that are making <laughs> good living doing these guys' taxes. I'll tell you that. So Fletcher's got a kick again. Uh, fourth down and seven. Kinstry just has everybody clear out of the way, and this one also goes out of bounds. <laughs> it's amazing to watch these football games, how they can just turn on a play. Wow. It really is. In a matter of 12, yep. 12 seconds here, 13 yep. seconds there. Coming up on a college football postgame show. Present yes. Forget the momentum, forget the crowd, do your job. I mean, it looked like Arkansas had everything going their way. Third and 15, backup quarterback, boom. All of a sudden, some, everything changes. Yep. Now we just hope that that guy will be able to come in again this season sometime, or maybe as soon as next week. Who knows? We'll find out in Tuscaloosa with you in prime time next Saturday. And Alabama won't lose the number two ranking, even though they gave up a bad third quarter. Tonight, number one, Georgia playing Mizzou on the road. Ohio State saw Rutgers have a 7 0 lead and then pretty much ran away with that one. Michigan beat Iowa. Clemson and North Carolina State, big game in the ACC tonight. Kentucky lost to Ole Miss 22 19 in a game that was just kind of stuck in gear there in the fourth quarter and never really changed. So that'll keep Ole Miss in the thick of things. Roydell Williams now getting some carries. Jameer Gibbs days, I'm sure, done. Now, the surprise of the SEC this year has got to be Texas a and don't you think, though? I mean, everybody had them penciled in that uh, they were the second most talented team at that big matchup at uh, Alabama. Everybody thought we'd have two undefeated teams, and ain't them struggling. Of course, they did hand Alabama one of only their two losses last year, so it'll be a rematch of that one that we saw at College Station. And the ball is out. And I guess the tide recovered it. Looked to me like Hudson Clark, number 17, ripped this ball out when he was coming in on the tackle late. Watch him rip. Yes, it was sure Clark. Got a timeout here in the final five minutes. Four fifty one to play, forty nine twenty six Alabama. Look at the rushing yards in the second half. <laughs> Three gigantic runs. Milro, two by Gibbs. Arkansas took that time out with the punt upcoming from Burnett. Bryce Stevens made the first man miss. Got a block. He run out of bounds unceremoniously, probably with a personal foul at about the 28 yard line. He called on Moody, twisting him late when he got out of bounds. Right at the end of this play, all he had to do is knock him out and got a guy down on the special teams for Alabama. Demoy Kennedy is the man that's down. And here's, oh, well, that's going to yeah, be maybe a face, face mask, mask yep. too on top yep. of everything else. Might have got away with the toss, but not the face mask.
Working on the left leg of Des Moines Kennedy. Yeah, unstable leg right there. You know, nobody ever wants to get hurt, but it's also it's toughest to get hurt when the game's basically over right. like this. We'll check on him when we come back. And Mark Kennedy will go straight to the Alabama locker room, injured on that punt coverage. You're going to see him right in the middle of the screen. And yeah, plants mm, that left mm, leg, mm. and at the knee goes. Putting a little bit of pressure on it as he gets help to the locker room. Meanwhile, with the flag, the personal foul, the line of scrimmage is a 45 after the punt return. Kate Fortin in at quarterback for Arkansas. <laughs> Couple yard gain on the plate. John Parker Wilson on the left. The last John came up to me. In the, before the game, and he said, you know, who's the last quarterback that's lost here? They still love me because I'm the guy. Oh, well, he's the guy. <laughs> 2006. While we're talking about radio, I want to send uh, our wishes out to Eli Gold, longtime play-by-play -play man for the Tide. Eli's been doing it for since time began. I don't know, but he's having some health issues. Eli, we miss you, buddy. And uh, Chris Stewart filled in for him, doing a great job over there in the booth. Uh, Along with John Parker, the Everybody, Gary's talking about. Everybody misses Eli, especially when they're they're on the same side and he comes into the booth and visits with us. That's a great time. Fortin. Looking to throw on the run. Now he's gonna run. And got the first down and got clobbered by Malachi Moore. Sure did. First down. Still in bounds. He slows down, doesn't he? He slows down as he crosses the first down, and then it gives the opportunity for the safety to get a clean shot on you. Not sure that's the same call on the other sideline, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> that was clean hit, though. And he throws a strike, a quick slant to Landers. That should be another first down. The crowd came out decked in red today, hoping for an upset. They're going to come up short. That was a nice spin move by Hazelwood. And he's trying to get the defenders off him. Does get it inside the 20 to the 18. So that's when the receiver really has to feel that pass. When that pass slows you down, do the spin move, go the other way. If he leads you forward, just keep running. Run right through the ball. Yeah, good looking move. Yep. Fifth catch for Hazelwood today. In the red zone for the Razorbacks. Fumbled snap by Fortin. Now Will Anderson. No, it's not Will Anderson. Defense given chase. He throws it away. It was Chris Braswell who was applying the pressure. See the snap looked perfect the first time it was. Took his eye off it for the play action, gets it back, outruns Braswell, and gets rid of it. And a garbage time, but if you're a backup player, it's experience for the future. Sure. I mean, something happens to Jefferson, these are going to be valuable plays for Arkansas later in the year. Orton overshot his intended receiver, Jaden Wilson. It'll be third down. Third and ten at the 17. Put Will Anderson back in the game now. On third and ten. Will be matched up against Luke John Jones, number 70 on the left side. There's the matchup right there. That wide split. 
Here he comes. Throws over the middle and complete. The Nathan backs the tight end who came in earlier for Trey Knox when he was shaken up. It's fourth down. Fourth and five. Receivers in tight here on fourth down at five. Last chance for Arkansas. Fortin got a man open out in the flat. It's Hazelwood. Not going to get there. Alabama's going to take over on downs. Terry and Arnold made the saving stop to prevent a first down. So this is perfect defense by Alabama. You give them the short ball and then you close. And you don't miss the tackle, and you can get off the field. That's a good tackle right there. Six, six, seven, wrap up, wrap up, wrap up, beat it. So Alabama takes over with two minutes to go. Arkansas still has two timeouts remaining. I don't know if they'll choose to use them or not. Jalen Milrow. Came through, didn't he? He did. Trey Sanders getting a call for a yard or so. Young, there's his numbers before he injured his shoulder, and Jenny will have an opportunity to talk to Coach Saban when it's over, and maybe we'll get more information. I just <laughs> like the point. fact that he's always smiling, but that's kind of like Bryce Young's uh, normal attitude about everything. So, I like the way you put it. Maybe we'll get more information. Well, maybe, maybe not. All you can do is ask the question, right? That's right. You might not get the answer you're looking for. <laughs> Sanders. Couple yards shy of the first down. Mississippi State had a big win at Texas A&M, and Arkansas goes to Mississippi State next. That won't be easy with Will Rogers and company slinging it around. Alabama goes back home, as we talked about, against the Aggies next Saturday night. And there'll be some happy Alabama fans because they've been questioning things and they probably still have some questions and some things that Nick Saban's going to say we have to clean up, especially that third quarter. But I think talking about we can't run the ball and all that nonsense has been put to rest at least for one day. Yeah, all the questions will go about number nine. What's his health? All right. Will it be in the future if we don't have Bryce yet? Or if he's nicked, how long will it be? Well, his team gets a win. Today, 16th straight over Arkansas. 49-26 is the final tally. Don't anybody touch that shoulder for right now. Sure. <laughs> He's shaking hands with his right hand. I did. Good eye. Jenny's with Nick Saban. Coach, your Heisman Trophy winner and Bryce Young goes down. The rest of the team steps up. What did you learn about the resiliency of this squad today? Well, you know, what I'd like to talk about is our team. You know, our team just won a game on the road. It wasn't pretty all the time, but they made plays when they had to make it. We love Bryce. Bryce has got a sprained shoulder. You know, hopefully, you know, we'll get some diagnosis on him and see how he goes. But what about the game? What about the team? What about the players that play the game? Let's talk about that. What do you, how would you characterize that win here? I mean, Jameer Gibbs played great, made some big runs. Quarterback went in the game and made some plays. I mean, the defense, you know, made some plays. We made some horrible mistakes, you know, on special teams. But we, we overcame it. But there's a lot that we can learn from this game today. And hopefully our team will get better because of it. Coach, thank you for your time. I think that's what Jenny asked him in the first place. He didn't hear it, I guess. I, I think he had a preconceived answer. Yes, he right? did. No. He thought the first question was going to be about the adapt. That's a logical thought, that's but it right. didn't happen. Oh, well. 
We got the point across, and can he only, got his point across. And only ask the question, and he answered the way you want to answer. That's right. right? That's right. That's what you and I do when yep. we're not on the air. <laughs> All right. Time for our plays of the game, presented by Jersey Mike Subs. And there were some big ones, especially when Alabama was getting threatened, and this couldn't have been much bigger on third down and 15. With Jalen Milrow taking off, turning on the Jets, cutting to the near side, and going 77 yards to get it down to first and goal, and they took it in from there. Yeah, Next good. possession, Jameer Gibbs, who's the star of the game, set sail on this one, 70-plus to the house. Nobody was going to get him. Here's how Chris Stewart called it on the Alabama Radio Network. As he will go in a handoff to Gibbs, turns it up, foot race, 40, midfield, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Jameer Gibbs, 72 yards to the house, and Alabama quiets the crowd even more. That was a call on a 72-yard touchdown run by that young man. He had a 75-yarder just moments later. Big game, over 200 on the ground for Jameer Gibbs, and Alabama wins it 49-26. That's going to wrap it up for us for Gary Daniels and Jenny Dell, Gene Steratore, our entire CBS crew, Brad Nestler saying so long from Fayetteville. Final score, second-ranked Alabama 49, number 20, Arkansas 26. We'll get you back to Adam Zucker and company for the college football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage right after these messages. See you next Saturday in Tuscaloosa.